It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football, featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's play-by-play coverage is being brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Ford of Hagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. PanhandleDumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis Broker. GreenTreeRealty.com. Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. folk for wvcom And by Smallwood and Small, an Erie affiliate. Total Insurance Solutions. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome into Ram Stadium. We are in historic Shepherdstown, West Virginia, home of the Shepherd University Rams. And on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, it is the site of this 2019 NCAA Division II football opener. And it should be a good one as the Rams play host to the Panthers from Ohio Dominican out of Columbus, Ohio. For TV10 Sports, I'm Matt Miller along with Matt Crawford. Caleb Falero is our engineer at the studio. We'll introduce you to the rest of our telecast crew a little later on in the pregame show. Matt, right now we begin to preview this matchup, which as I said a moment ago, should be good. It's based on how these teams have been playing really throughout their traditions, but coming off of strong years last year and with some key players back to help lead the way. Yeah, and you talk about traditions, and there's a short tradition right now of Ohio Dominican. This is only a football program that has been around since 2004, but is still relatively young. But you look at uh, three playoff appearances since 2004, a very young program just making the transition into NCAA over the last couple of years. And this is a historic. is going trying to get back to the tradition it wants to be and last year was a step in the wrong direction i think for the shepherd football program but it was a learning curve last year so hopefully they are uh, adjusting that this year and it should be back to the winning ways of the shepherd rams although again seven to three not a bad year and meanwhile ohio dominican coming off of a nine and two campaign their disappointment came that they did not make the ncaa division two football playoffs it was a strong season with the only two losses coming against hillsdale 34 to 18 and then a very tough loss on the road at Tiffin 24 to 23 and this Ohio Dominican team with some key returning players from that squad last year really looking forward to building on that success. Yeah, absolutely. This is a team coming in uh, the Panthers of Ohio can, Ohio Dominican uh, that is returning a quarterback very similar to what we're going to see out of Tyson Bajan the Shepherd University Rams is a team that uh, threw uh, for 25 uh, through for 48 100 yards uh, last year, about 283 per game, but also a very good ground attack team rushing for about 155. Again, that's 20 more than the Shepherd Rams did last year. So you're looking at a very balanced team that is only going to get better from last year. 
Well, this is the pregame show. It's being brought to you by Brown Funeral Homes in Martinsburg, Inwood, Charlestown, Ranson, Robert Fields and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home proudly serving the area since 1880. We need to take our first break, but when we come back, we'll go inside the locker room as we get a chance to talk with Rams head coach Ernie McCook. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. It's one of the At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. And we welcome you back into the pregame show brought to you by Brown Funeral Home in Martinsburg, Inwood, Charlestown, and Ranson, Robert Field, and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home proudly serving the area since 1880. Here talking inside the locker room with Coach Ernie McCook. Coach, it's game week. You happy that's finally here? Oh, man, we're all excited. We can't. We just can't wait to kick off on Saturday. Our teams are fired up and... Yeah, we got to put a few final touches to today's game plan, but we can't wait to, for the ball to get kicked off. How would you grade camp so far heading into week one? You know, I'm just really proud of our football team, the effort that they've put into this program for the last six months from January to now. I thought camp was it went exactly how we wanted it to go. Guys defined their roles. They grew. Uh, they came together. Got, you see guys getting better. You see the units getting better in all three phases. So I think camp, camp was an A. I know you're probably getting tired of answering this question, but a new opponent in week one, something you guys really aren't used to. How different is preparing for this Ohio Dominican team rather than a Mountain East Conference opponent that you've seen multiple times before? Well, we're going to have a new opponent each and every week this year, so that's going to be uh, we're going to be used to it. But uh, we think they are a great football team. Um, but they're 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 such a good football team. It's helped bring focus to our program. Uh, our players, you know, you can see them on film. That hey man, they got really good players. They have great scheme. They make plays. They win ball games. So we better be right um, in our preparation for this football team that we're going to play. And they're, they're a great team. Nine and two last year. They're a re regional contender. They're a playoff contender. So it, I think the, our fans are in for a great ball game on Saturday. You mentioned the fans in for a great ball game. What is the significance of being able to open the season here as opposed to waiting and not having your first home game till much later in the month? Well, you know, that, I think that was a big part of finding the 11th game and, you know, as we kind of went through the whole scheduling process, finding the right team that we could match up with, and, and that had an open date. We, I think we were down to about three left in the country, and uh, we were able to secure this deal with Ohio Dominican. Uh, so I think our, play, our players, are they just couldn't wait to get an 11th game. Our players want to play 11 games. Our team wants, you know, we want that as a team, a program. I think it's good for our fans that we're going to have six home games this year. I know obviously you got to wait till the first game to truly see adversity, but it seems like this year's team is gelling a little bit more than last year's team, including that leadership council that you and the coaches came up with. How have you seen the team gel a little bit more this year than last year? Well, I think you see maturity. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of young guys playing last year, and they've just matured through our winter conditioning, our workouts, spring practice into camp. Uh, we have a, a lot of great leaders within our program, you know, and I thought that's one of the greatest things about the leadership council. You know, instead of having four voted captains, we have 15 guys that help lead this football team in 2019. 
When you look at that council and that leadership, what kind of went into that decision to go that route as opposed to the regular four captains? Uh, you know what we wanted to uh, we wanted our players to feel that they they had a voice, um, that they had people there to support them, and uh, there's nothing like having a teammate that will be there to support you, and uh, I th you know that's the biggest thing about it. Um, you know, kind of doing our research into it, other programs that have done it, the uh, pros and the cons with it, there really are no cons. It's a real positive deal for all our players, and, and I just think it's going to help the young guys kind of mature, come along. It'll help our older guys in leadership roles. How much do you look at this year as a good way to uh, kind of create a new slate and create a new, I don't want to say identity because you want to piggyback off what this a great tradition is, but in a new conference, a bunch of new opponents, just a way to uh, kind of start clean. Well, you know what, we play a new game each and every week, and I, I have a saying, the most important play is the next play. So that's what we live for, and you're only judged by what you accomplished recently. And uh, I think that's kind of the mindset of a football coach, and I think everybody in our program has that mindset, that we're just trying to be successful on Saturday and take the next step after that. We, we truly play it one play at a time, one game at a time, and we're going to hang our hat on that. Well, hopefully you get that accomplishment and a win on Saturday. Coach, thank that, you. That's the goal. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And that's in the locker room with Shepherd head coach Ernie McCook brought to you by Parsons Ford at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg. In the market for a new or used vehicle, check out their great selection online at ParsonsFordOfMartinsburg.com. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons will be back with more of the pregame show brought to you by Brown Funeral Home next. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Welcome back into the Brown Funeral Home pregame show. Time to go back inside the hash marks here with Ponce de Leon. Ponce, how's the defense looking this year? Uh, we're looking real good. We have completed every piece in our defense, but from, from our safeties all the way down to our D linemen, we're looking real good as a defense. I can't wait. I like how we're all together and we're all working hard every day, so it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good defense. How much does that togetherness come from being a younger group last year and kind of growing as a younger group, coming back with a lot of returners this year? Well, I mean, just we're always hanging out with each other, so it helps a lot. You know, I know from last year we were very young, so we weren't reading. Really, there wasn't really a lot of, um, you know, togetherness, but because young people being with older people, they didn't want to respect people. But now that you know, we just have known each other for long. We've been working with each other. We all respect each other. We all respect the work that we get in. So it's 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 easy and it's really good. I mean, one of the toughest things on this team is to please Coach Klein. You feel like you guys have done that through camp so far going into week one? Uh, not yet, you know, not yet. Unless we're, we're ranked number one defensively, that's when we'll, that's when we'll impress him. But uh, he knows that he has a good defense. We just got to keep working. You know, we got to make sure that we listen to him because he's a good defensive co coordinator. So as long as we just listen to him and um, we do what needs to be done, we'll be good. So once we get that number one, then he won't be satisfied. How much does it encourage you guys knowing that your peers around the PSAC have pitched you guys at number two in the preseason rankings on uh, your side of the PSAC? Does that put a little bit of a target on your back, or do you see that as just a more motivation? I see it as more motivation because it's disrespect. We should be number one. 
you know, because, but that just, we got to show them, we got to go in this piece that can show us, show them who we are to be number one, so. What do you see in the Ohio Dominican offense from what you've looked at on film so far? They have, uh, they have a good offense, very strong offense. Um, I know some of their seniors have left. They're, that was a key, that was key on their um, offense, but they have a really good quarterback, similar to Tyson. They have some good receivers, you know, very fast and shifty, but um, they're pretty good, very well respected. So, How excited are you to have the first game at home and come out at Ram Stadium to start the 2019 campaign? It's going to be emotional because, um, you know, we haven't played football in a while. Waiting this whole year, I've been working so hard at it, and it's just a blessing to finally play football. I know some people aren't able to play football, so I just can't wait. It's going to be very exciting. A lot of emotions going to be running, and I just can't wait. College football is back. Well, Ponce, thanks for the time. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. That's Ponce De Leon, and that concludes our Between the Hash Marks segment here in the pregame. We'll be back with more of the Brown Funeral Home pregame show coming up next. This is Shepherd Ram Football on TV10. Welcome back into the pregame show. It's time to go inside the hash marks for starting quarterback Tyson Bajan. Tyson, you happy it's finally game week? Oh, I'm super excited. Couldn't be happier. What have you all seen in Ohio Dominican so far in film study? Uh, a lot of good things. You know, they're a very well-coached team. Uh, you know, we just got to take everything that they give us. Uh, well, how nice is it that you guys have a home game this early in the season rather than waiting uh, for two road games before coming home? Yeah, I thought that was the biggest thing, you know, being able to play a home game before September 28th uh, was definitely big on everybody's mind, and I think the coach staff did a good job in, in finding Ohio Dominican uh, for, the opening, for the opening game. Obviously, as a true freshman last year, it was going to take some time for you to get that rhythm with your wide receivers. Do you feel that was a little bit easier this year going into camp and now going into week one? Yeah, I definitely thought this whole this whole camp leading up into you know leading up into this Saturday, I felt a lot more smooth in everything I did and a lot more uh, decisive in you know everything I was doing out on the field. So I definitely think uh, it'll show uh, come Saturday. What do you see overall in the offense? Obviously, you're more going to be familiar with the passing game, but running wise, it seems like every year Shepard's going to have at least one, maybe two guys that can help carry the load. How big is that running game to help you out? Uh, I mean, it's awesome. You got to be able to run the ball in order to be successful, you know, in football, and, I, and that, that's no matter who you're playing for. Um, I think overall, as an offense, you know, we're just a lot more explosive than last year. We got a lot more speed, and I think Glover and Ty Hebron are going to do a great job carrying most of the load for us uh, Saturday. Obviously, you're a local kid. How nice is it to be able to come out here and be in front of not only family but people you've grown up with your entire life, and knowing that you have just that much more support on top of the Ram family. Uh, yeah, it was huge. Don't I mean the main, you know, 90% of the reason why I came to Shepherd was so I could see my my brother and my sisters and my mom and dad, you know, more frequently than I would be able to if I had went anywhere else. So, um, you know, super happy with my decision and super happy that I get to see them, you know, a couple of days out of the week. Well, Tyson, good luck against Ohio Dominican. We'll talk to you after the game of next week. Thank you. That's. Tyson Bajan, starting quarterback of the Shepherd Rams, will be back with more of the pregame show brought to you by Brown Funeral Home next. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. 
Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. 763737 or stop by her office at 138 East German Street in Shepherdstown. You can find her online as well at greentreerealty.com. Matt, as we take a look at this matchup today, obviously a key is going to be which defense can step up and slow down two pretty good offenses led by two very good quarterbacks. Yeah, and that's exactly where I was going to go with these keys to the game for Shepard. I think you look at not only stopping a good quarterback, but this is a front seven that for Shepard's standards, I think struggled a little bit last year. They were smaller, they were young in that defensive line and that line back and core. So I think it's going to be key to them to get penetration early in the football game and stop that run as much as they can. Again, this is an Ohio Dominican team that was running for 155 yards a game last year, and they're bringing back two very good running backs from last year's team. So I think that's a key for Shepard defensively. Offensively, they got to get the run going early. I think Tyson will be settled in a lot more than he was week one last year at Notre Dame where he had those two early picks. And for Ohio Dominican, I think they just need to piggyback off of what they did last year. Offensively, a very balanced 50-50 team, so hopefully if they don't change anything, they can be as productive on offense and defense. They're going to have to try to stop a very dynamic offense for Shepard as well. Another year older, another year more mature and more experienced, Uh, so I think those are the keys to the game for both teams. E.J. Colson, the leading returning rusher for Ohio Dominican, ran for 781 yards and 10 touchdowns last year, and Evan Ernst took over in week three of the season and did not disappoint as uh, he was one of the tops in the nation in completion percentage at 73%. He threw for 2,506 yards, 28 touchdowns, and just seven picks. It is a very formidable offense for this Ohio Dominican team. But, hey, Shepard pretty good with the football as well, led by Tyson Bajan, who threw for 3,029 yards, 29 touchdowns, and 13 picks last season. Bajan ranked in the top 10 in the nation in numerous quarterback categories. Keys to the game again brought to you by Green Tree Realty in Shepherdstown. Find out more online at greentreerealty.com. We've got one final break to take when we come back. It's a look at the starting lineups and the opening kick of Shepherd Ram football on TV10. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. Back again here at Rams Stadium where it's time for a look at today's starting lineups. They're brought to you by Panhandle Dumpsters, giving Berkeley County residents options. Get a free garbage can and service for only $23 a month. Local and family-owned. Learn more at panhandledumpsters.com or call 1-833-DUMP-STR. Now the Shepherd Rams going to get the 
football to get this game started. It looks like as Ohio Dominican winning the coin toss and deferring to the second half. So that Shepard Ram offense will be led by starting quarterback Tyson Bajent. Joining him in the backfield is Deontay Glover. You'll see Michael McCook as a fullback. Rodney Dorsey and Devin Phelps are the wide receivers. DJ Cornish, the tight end. Joey Fisher and Eric Ostro are the tackles. Keandre Batson and Cole Weaver, the guards. And Evan Ostro, brother of Eric, is the starting center. Let's look at that defense for Ohio Dominican as Chris Green and Brian Adams are ends. Aaron Smoot-Baker is going to be the nose tackle. And, well, we are ready to get this one underway. And doing the kicking, Kyle Lamming, and it's a high, deep kick along the far side that goes into and out of the hands of Chris Jones and will bounce out of bounds on the far side in the end zone as a touchback. Not really the way you want to start the season if you're Shepard Chris Jones uh, fumbling the opening kickoff a little bit. And again, going into the end zone, you're at the two-yard line, something you can have happen. It's usually going to have that same result, but uh, that's not necessarily the best omen if you're Shepard fumbling the first uh, play of the season. Finishing up that defense for Ohio Dominican, Jalen Garner, Alessio Amato, Cameron Moore, and Dawson Dales are the linebackers. Ashton Gilkey, along with Rich Jones, are corners. Gus Dimmerling and Jaden Davis are the safeties. So Ram of football starting from their own 25 on first down. Bajan with a quick pass to that far side. That wide receiver screen being hauled in by... Greg Leonard and Leonard able to scoot out across the 30 out to about the 32. We'll call it a gain of seven. And I like that opening play call to start this season. Tyson Bajan, while he is a more mature quarterback and going into his second year, still a young quarterback. So a quick screen, secondary playing a little further off by about eight yards. It's a good way to get Tyson a rhythm early with those quick little screen passes. On second down and three, Bajan awaiting that shotgun snap giving a little direction to the tailback. He will take that snap and hand it off, and that is Deontay Glover. Glover, 5'10", 210-pound senior out of nearby Inwood, West Virginia. Picks up a couple, it looks like, as he's out to the 34-yard line, and the Rams will face a third down and one. Yeah, defensive penetration right there. Front seven got into the offensive line. of Shepard was able to establish that line of scrimmage and keep it where it was. See what the Rams can do on a third and short, trying to keep this opening drive going. Again, the pistol formation, two receivers here to the wide side left with the ball on that far side. Hash mark, Glover straight ahead, running quickly into that linebacking court. Nice stutter step move, breaks the tackle, coming near side to the midfield stripe and tackled from behind at the 45-yard line. A great open field tackle coming from behind was Dawson Dales able to bring him down. And if you're a running back, you hope to maybe have one good spin move, stiff arm, specialty move, if you will, on one run. That was two right up there for Shepard. A good run right up the middle there across midfield. Now in to Ohio Dominican territory. Shepard offense moving very well right now, going forward on two of the first three plays. They convert with a 21-yard run on the third down and one, and now from the 45 of ODU, Bajan out of the shotgun, taking the snap, looking near side as an open receiver, and just a little high and behind his intended target, Devin Phelps. Yeah, some missed timing right there. Not sure uh, Phelps was supposed to uh, slow down where he did in the field right there. Looked like the timing was just a bit off. Tyson was expecting to be up to about the 25 at that point, and Devin Phelps uh, kind of hit the brakes a little bit at about the 27. That's a play that's going to be a good for about 20 yards later on in the season and maybe even later on in this game as these guys get a little bit more familiar with each other in a game situation. Bajan will have three receivers bunched here on this left side of the formation. He'll throw on that far side. He was looking for a quick slant, it looked like, from Devin Phelps, but Phelps went down the field instead, and that passed down into the turf and incomplete. Yeah, there was a safety coming in on the back side. Looks like the strong safety was coming in. And what happened right there was I think Phelps didn't want to create contact and possibly give the corner that was playing off him an easy interception. So he hit the brakes, and lucky that one wasn't intercepted by the, the corner or the outside linebacker make that that is uh, covering the slot receiver right now. Back-to-back -back incompletions, bringing up a third down and ten. Two receivers to each side of the formation as Bajan wants to throw. Has all day. Great protection. Fires it out near side. And a diving attempt along the sideline for... Rodney Dorsey, the wide receiver, but could not bring it in. That's good coverage downfield by Ohio Dominican. No one was open. The offensive line gave Bajan all kinds of time. Yeah, they did, and you could tell 
Uh, that Dorsey was his number one receiver, never really took his eyes off from that play. Again, that's still a young quarterback mistake he's going to make, but a Shepard's drive, though, looking promising through the first couple of plays, uh, quickly halted by a good Ohio Dominican defensive stand once Shepard got into their territory. Noah Pohl will be the punter. Steps into this one, gets it out of there. A nice kick that will land inside the five along the near side numbers and bounce into the end zone. So it goes 45 yards, but will net uh, just 25 yards as that punt will come out to the 20-yard line. So the Ohio Dominican gives up the 21-yard run and a Ram first down on their opening series, but then shuts them down with three incompletions. And now we'll get our first look at Evan Ernst and this Panther offense. So a little weird calling a punt there, and it wasn't Rue Venter? Yes. I know he was one of your, one of your all-time favorites here at Shepard. Ernst awaiting the shotgun snap, takes it and hands it off. The tailback hit immediately in the hole and driven down on the play. And on that carry, E.J. Colson, again their leading returning rusher, and uh, he got back to the line and nothing more. Yeah, Colson last year about five yards a carry every time he touched the football. And that's what you wanted to see by that Shepard front four right there. Three down linemen, now four is that defensive end going down, but that was good penetration by the front seven. Ernst to taking that helmet high snap, slings it out near side, wide receiver screen, catch made, and very quickly Chris Lane there to knock down the wide receiver. That is, uh, looks like uh, David Turner on the reception. And Jared Austin made that play. He wasn't in on the tackle, but he made that play. He was being blocked by number 44, uh, Skrkowicz, I believe is. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the tight end. He had a tight end where he was being blocked on the outside and Jared also did a good job of forcing him back into where that play was going to be not allowing a running lane. On third and ten, Ernst to throw, has a lot of time, now begins to run and lofts that pass along the near side and the catch is made by the big tight end. He will be shy of what he needed for the first down, however, as he'll make that catch out at about the 28 and that is Blake Staradovich. Staradovich. Staradovich who is the tight end. Staradovich with that reception, but again, not enough for the first, and the punting unit will come on. Good defensive stand right there by Shepard playing. Ben, don't break defense. It's a, a Josh Klein defense when you look at the secondary. They'll give you uh, three or four yards, maybe even six or seven, knowing where those sticks are. Good awareness about the secondary, making sure they did not allow that football to get to that 31-yard line of moving chains. Their punter is Logan Neidhart. He's a junior and was very good. Ninth in the nation last year with an average of 43 yards a kick. This floater bouncing at about the Ram 45 and taking a shepherd roll back out to the 48 before Jaden Davis jumps on that football. And Shepard will have good field position. Really not moving a whole lot from where they punted the football last drive. You're only talking about... Oh, about a seven-yard difference from where they punted the football on their last drive. So a good defensive stand and didn't lose all that clock when they had to punt the football. So with that punch, Shepard will take over. Still no score. 11.37 to play here in our opening quarter. So from the 48, their own 48. Out of the shotgun with a pistol formation. Bajan on the play action. Rolls near side and dumps it off. He's got the tight end who makes that grab at the 45 and taken down at the 44-yard line. And that should be uh, the tight end Alex Wetzel with the catch. He became a pretty favorite target of Tyson Bajan a year ago. He did. not It's funny how tight ends seem to do that. Receivers, you get in a little bit of a rhythm, but tight ends seem to be uh, some of the most sure-handed on the team. And they're really a, a safety blanket a lot of times just coming to the flats just like you saw for younger quarterbacks. So it's second down, and we'll call it one after that gain of nine. Bajan looking to the far sideline as it looks like they're changing up that play call. Play clock down to about seven seconds on second and short. Power pistol as the handoff goes to Deontay Glover. Met in the hole, continues to churn, pushing forward to the 40-yard line for a four-yard pickup and another Ram first down. you got to like the early running of Deontay Glover. Yeah, those last couple yards were all him. That first down was all him. Got past the first level of offensive line blockers and took on that linebacker in the second level head-to-head, -head, put that left shoulder down and really created that as extra yards couple of first downs and now for Shepard in this first quarter. First and ten from the 40 of Ohio Dominican. 
in that pistol formation. And on the play action, Bajan wants to throw deep down the middle, has an open receiver, Phelps is there, makes the grab in the end zone. It's a Shepard University Ram touchdown. And Devin Phelps, nothing special on that one, just ran a flat out post right to the middle of the field, the left, a notch of the H in Shepard in the new turf here at Ram Stadium in a perfect a pitch and catch from Tyson Bajan. A little bit underthrown, but Devin Phelps had the defender beat by a good three or four yards by the time that ball went into the air. And uh, what a play for the first touchdown of this 2019 season for the Shepherd Rams. Devin Phelps actually doing an internship with us at TV10. And uh, good to see him out there making that grab. He tells us he runs about a 4 3 40, and he showed that speed getting behind the defense for that one. The extra point attempt, and it is a low knuckling line drive, but wow, it is up and it is through for Hayden August Scriven. And with 10 minutes and 16 seconds to play in our opening quarter, we'll take a break with Shepard on top of ODU 7 0. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Hayden August to Scriven tees the football at the 35 to our right. Gets ready to approach the ensuing kick after the Ram touchdown. We'll give you the drive summary in a moment. Beautiful deep kick that's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Actually lands out of the back of the end zone well over the head of David Turner, the wide receiver who was looking to return that kick. For Shepard, it was a three-play, 52-yard drive. Took a minute and 21 seconds, 40 yards on the touchdown pass going from Tyson Bajan to Devin Phelps. And that has the Rams out in front in that drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Learn more online at folk4wv.com. Second offensive possession now for Ohio Dominican. From their own 25-yard line, Ernst out of the gun, taking that snap, hands it off to Colson, spins away from one tackler but cannot get away from the next. That's Elaine in there again, helping to make the tackle along with Austin. The two linebackers really active early on. Yeah, that front seven doing a very good job getting early penetration in this one. Colson able to pick up, we'll call it two, out to that 27-yard line. Second down and eight coming. Colson has two carries for just two yards. Ernst has that shotgun snap, slings out the pass near side. Wow, almost intercepted as cutting in front of that one. The Ram defender, Ponce de Leon, the free safety, down injured on the play. He almost got to it, but instead the catch was made by Cedric Washington, and he'll get out to the 34-yard line for a seven-yard gain. And that, I think that's a little bit more than a cramp. He came all the way through, and his leg was completely straight when he hit the turf. So hopefully it's something that can be worked out quickly. But on a warm day, a lot of these injuries you may see earlier are going to be cramps just from conditioning. But I think that one, it looks like it could be a little bit more of a severe left leg injury. Uh, you certainly hope not. He is a key to this defense. You had a chance to talk with him during our Brown Funeral Home pregame show. De Leon is up to his feet. And he is able to put pressure on it. He's walking off it looks like under his own power as the trainer with him and now he does want a little bit of assistance yeah that right leg seems to be given out a little bit every time he tries to put pressure on it and had a chance he was one of our in between the hash marks segment interviews this week and a guy that was just really really excited about this football season excited about what the defense could do this year 
So you hope this is something that can be worked out in this game, or at least if it's going to keep him out of this game, something that can be fixed so he doesn't miss a length of time this season. So, again, hoping for the best. So it'll bring in Michael Blackman Herbert, 5'10", sophomore, who will replace De Leon, who goes out with the injury. So Herbert in at that free safety position. Third down and one coming up for Ohio Dominican. A little bit of time with the injury to discuss what they might like to do as quarterback Evan Ernst leads them to the line of scrimmage. E.J. Kosid will line up about a yard behind him and to his left. Two receivers out to that left. Single receiver to the right. Now a man in motion. He'll be a lead blocker, it looks like, as he stops in behind the line. There is the handoff, and getting back to the line of scrimmage is Colson, but met there and driven backwards. Oh, yeah. Nice job by that defense, including the young man that just came in, Michael Blackman Herbert. And you got to give a lot of credit to Ricky Robinson along that defensive line as well. Yeah, absolutely. Again, that front seven doing a very good job of creating a new line of scrimmage. And Looks like they are going to punt the football, but that is fourth and about half a yard. And I think if they're any closer to midfield, this is a play where early on in the season you may go for it. And I think it even a different situation later on in this game that you may go for it. I, to me, this is a timeout situation. Really talk about it with your coordinators, but this is going to be a – a punt away for Ohio Dominican. Neidhart getting the kick out of there, coming up and making the fair catch at about the 32-yard line is the Rams' Rodney Dorsey. So Shepard again will get pretty decent field position. That punt covers 34 yards after the initial punts for Neidhart covered only about 24 yards. So a little bit of a slow start compared to the booming kicks that he had a season ago. So Ram football with their third offensive possession, a 7-0 Shepard lead. 8.27 to play in this opening quarter. Tyson Bajant will now have in the backfield Ty Hebron as his tailback in that pistol formation. Hebron taking that handoff, moving to his left, will get out to about the 35-yard line for a pickup of three. Good seal on that left side. Unfortunately, just running out of room for Ty Hebron. Had to cut back upfield, but... Some extra tight ends there trying to seal that left side, but a good job by the Ohio Dominican defense to overload of that near side of the field and force Hebron back up to the middle where they had some internal defenders. Michael McCook, a fullback slash tight end, H-back. Slash son of the head coach. And there you go, out there trying to block on that last play. He goes to the sideline. Now as it's a second and seven, play action pass, and in and out of the hands of a would-be interceptor as that pass a little behind the intended target who never turned to look for the football. That was Sterling Dudney, who was the intended target. His intended and Rich Jones wants that one back, corner for Ohio Dominican. He cradled that one like it was a punt coming in and unfortunately just hit off the chest protector on those shoulder pads. And that may have been a pick six, the way the Shepard Ram offense was moving up the field. That was uh, an early season misconnection. You yeah. know, they're going to go back and look at the film and talk to the young wide receiver about where that particular uh, route needed to be cut off. So third down and seven for the Rams from their own 35. Bajan again to throw over the middle. And this one is intercepted. Diving in there to pick that one off is... Alicio Amato, the senior linebacker. And yeah, that was a case where Tyson just throwing in a double coverage, not needed, didn't need to force the play right there. It was probably a primary receiver on that far side uh, that he was the primary target on, on that play, and Tyson just trying to force something early uh, that wasn't needed, and that is a costly turnover because Ohio Dominican going to start with the football in the Shepard Ram end up the field. Yeah, the 47-yard line by far their best starting field position as they started at their own 20 and their own 25 the first two times they had the football. Evan Ernst out of the gun with a back to his right side. I believe that's Colson. No, they have switched up backs, and on the play action, the pass comes near side, and that is Skaradovich, the tight end, with the catch, and he gets two yards down to the 45. So in the backfield at that time was Frederick Pitts, and they gave a little play action to Pitts and went to the tight end Skaradovich for a short game. 
I want to thank Smallwood and Small Insurance, our title sponsor to today's game, and a huge sponsor of Shepherd University Athletics and Shepherd University as a whole. So big thanks to them as helping us as one of our many sponsors to put Shepherd on the TV for you this year. On second down and eight, quick pass far side to the slot receiver. This time pulling that one in is David Turner. Very quickly met and brought down. How about a five for five start to this one for Ernst. See where they're going to mark it. Right at that 40 yard line. So that gained good for five and it's a third down and three. And similar to Bajan Ernst, uh, just a redshirt sophomore, so he's still a younger guy, so doing the same type of thing you saw Shepard do with Tyson early in the game. Quick throws, quick slants, just to get a level of comfort early in this ball game and early in this season. Ernst really barking hard, trying to get the Rams to jump, couldn't do it. Now it looks like they've changed up the play call. There is the snap with just a couple of seconds on the play clock. Throw deep near side, overthrown, and incomplete. Intended target, David Turner with a diving effort. Yeah, David Turner running a bit of a out and up, not quite a wheel wrap, went up to about the 25-yard line, cut out like he was going to just do a straight out pattern, then went around uh, the corner and unfortunately just not on the same page with Ernst to let him just a bit too far. We give that offensive line credit again, though. Uh, plenty of time for Ernst to, to be able to get that pass out of there. He could not connect, and on a third and three, Ohio Dominican will play the battle of field position. And once again, give credit to the Shepherd Ram defense. That was a turnover for the Shepherd offense in their own territory. And a good job by the defense not allowing first down. Neidhart sending the punt high into the air along the far side numbers. It bounces at about the 13 and then is grabbed right at the 15-yard line. And the punt will cover 25 yards, but a nice job of pinning Shepard inside their own 20. 6.08 remaining here in the first quarter of this one. Shepard, the 7-0 lead. Game one of the 2019 football season. Both of these defenses doing well. Shepard able to score on their second possession, a three-play 52-yard drive, and it was the 40-yard touchdown pass going from Bajan to Phelps that got the Rams on the board. Fourth offensive possession in this opening quarter, and by far the Rams' worst starting field position. It looks like Glover is back out there in the backfield as the snap goes back to Bajan and the quick wide receiver screen comes near side. On that reception is Rodney Dorsey. And Dorsey out across the 20 to about the 21 will pick up six yards. Dorsey been active in this game so far. Dorsey picking up six, bringing up second and four. Rams have done a nice job on first down, a gain of seven, a gain of nine. An incomplete pass, a gain of three, and now this a gain of six. Setting up second, third, and shorts, keys. Here's a wide receiver screen near side, and that's just simply a man-on-man -man matchup as Greg Leonard, the senior, pulls it in, and it gets out to about, let's see, the 26, and that five-yard gain is good for a Ram first down. Again, a lot of quick slants. You saw that a deep bomb to Devin Phelps earlier, and this is what those quick slants set up forces the corners and safeties to play a little further in because they don't want to give an eight-yard cushion and give you six yards a pop, and then they end up coming in, and that is when you do the little pump fake and end up getting Devin Phelps wide open or any receiver wide open like Devin Phelps did earlier. Five of ten passing in the early going for 67 yards for Bajan, a touchdown and a pick on the play-action pass. The grab is made at the 30 along the far side. Devin Phelps goes down to the ground to secure that one between the numbers and the hash marks. So Phelps picks up four on that reception, his second catch in this opening quarter. Quick moving first quarter here under five minutes, 440 and counting on a running clock here at Ram Stadium. Beautiful day here at Ram Stadium. Going to get up to about 80 degrees in that. I know you've been here and I've been here for scorchers in week one. So not a bad day at all, though easy for us today. We're in air-conditioned press box. It is nice, isn't it? There is a little underneath a touch pass going to the man in motion. Moving from left to right was Rodney Dorsey. He catches that touch pass and with blockers down in front, turns the corner on the right side, getting out to the 37, a gain of seven, and another Ram first down. I don't even know if you call that a handoff. No, that's a I, pass completion. That is that, a, it if was, he drops that, that is considered a pass incompletion as opposed to a fumble. Yeah, it was more of a smack down yeah. into the hands of Rodney Dorsey, so not a, not a conventional pass and not one that you would consider a handoff either. So just kind of redirecting the football. Yeah, really, yeah, you're right. 
Well, here is another pass here to the near side as the Rams are really working that short passing game to, uh, in particular, the slot receiver. And this time with that catch is Michael Freeman. So Freeman with the reception, and he gets it out to about the 43, and that gain is good for six yards. And you got to think that at some point here, you're setting up another long pass opportunity. Another couple of quick, short passes in a row for, for Tyson. So I expect possibly a play action here and a long pass at some point soon. Another quick pass out of the outside of the Dylan Brewer of bringing that one in. The Martinsburg to Martinsburg connection there for you. There you go. Dylan Brewer had to go uh, down and pick it right off the top of the turf. A couple of the assistant coaches for Ohio Dominican could see that play and are kind of looking going, did he really bring it in? And they say, yes, he did, but there's no gain on the play. It'll bring up a third down and four from their own 43. The Rams one of three on third down conversions so far in the opening quarter. 2.37 on the running first quarter clock. Shepard 7-0. The lead over Ohio Dominican as the receiver goes in motion to the far side of the 40-yard line. Yeah, Bajan with an empty backfield, wants to run with the football coming near side, gets to the sideline and steps out of bounds, and he will have the first down. Able to get by Dawson Dales, who was the only one who had a chance to maybe get him before picking up that first down. Great pocket awareness there by Tyson, realizing pressure was coming uh, from the uh, front side, just rolling uh, to this near side of the field, knowing where the sticks are and making sure he got there before getting out of bounds. Third and four, and the quarterback picks up five. Yeah, gets just beyond the sticks. First and ten, three first downs in this possession, six in this opening quarter now for the Rams. And they'll run the eighth play of this drive. Out of the power pistol, handoff going to the tailback and nothing going there on that carry. 84, that would be Shaquan Dyson. And Dyson met in the hole and very quickly brought down. I believe that was 5-1. Yeah, Chris Green who knifed in there and made that tackle. So they brought Dyson into the backfield. Normally listed as a wide receiver. He ends up losing about three yards. He set it down back at the 45 and it's second and 13. Minute and 20 and counting now. Shepard probably another couple of plays if the clock keeps running here in the first quarter. Hebron back out there as a tailback pass coming near side. Devin Phelps battling, and he brought it in, but the official is going to say that he did not have control as he stepped out of bounds. It looked like he eventually trapped it against the helmet of Rich Jones, the defensive back, and it is incomplete. And Jones playing very tight coverage today. The, the second or third time we've called his name, which is saying a lot in the first quarter for a cornerback and did a good job. Phelps made the catch, but he did a good job. Jones did of getting his helmet and the hands in there, just making sure Phelps couldn't completely have control of the football before getting a foot down. See the strong hands, though, of Phelps yeah, to be able to make that catch, even though it didn't count. Man in motion far side, that's Dorsey. Puts two receivers that way. Here's a dump off pass out of the backfield and the catch is made. That's Hebron. Hebron down the near sideline. He's got open territory, just one man to beat. Cuts back to his right and then gets hit from behind and taken down inside the 15-yard line. That's a touchdown at saving tackle for the linebacker, Alicio Amato. Yeah, and a good job of blocking by the offensive line and just wheeling out and pulling to this near side, creating a seam for Hebron. And you mentioned it, a touchdown saving tackle keeping Hebron out of the end zone as we'll get the bigger package coming in now as McCook coming back in as a fullback slash tight end. Listed as a fullback on the roster, but I don't think Shepard's had a legitimate only fullback since John Hammer has left, so playing more of that tight end position, the second tight end position now. 43 yards, the gain on that screen pass to set up first and 10 at the 12. Handoff going to Deontay Glover, met in the backfield and spun down for a loss. Boy, looked momentarily like he might escape the tackle of Aaron Smoot Baker, ah, but the big junior able to spin him down for a loss of three. Now that time, great penetration by that defensive front line. Able to get in there and bring down Deontay Glover, who's got 24 yards on four carries in the opening quarter, and we're down to seven, six, five, four, and oh, it looks like the Rams are going to go ahead and let the clock 
wind out. Yep, as the teams head back to their sidelines, we'll take a break. Quarter number one in the books in the opener here at Rams Stadium. We step aside with your score, Shepard 7, Ohio Dominican nothing. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Let's go to quarter number two. The Shepherd Rams with a seven to nothing lead along with Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller, Caleb Falero, our studio engineer, Eric Sterick, Jenny Kuhn, Andrew Ford operating cameras, John Alderton running our sling studio. Joseph Dagg is our director and Jason Kerr, our video producer for today's telecast. This is the 12th play of this Ram drive. It'll come from their own 15, now moving from left to right on the play action. The pass going to the fullback tight end and making that grab McCook gets to the 10 yard line forced out of bounds on that far side after a gain of five. Tyson moving the ball around to a bunch of different receivers early in this one I think that shows that there's a lot of different receivers getting open he's finding them uh, using the check down because not a lot of times the uh, backside tight end or the number two tight end is the uh, number one receiver on a play so Tyson doing a very good job of, of moving around the pocket uh, using uh, the pocket he has, wherever that pressure is coming from, to avoid initial contact and finding those open receivers and finding them relatively quickly. He hasn't had anything close to a sack yet, so that's off to Tyson on the offensive line so far. 13th play of the possession from the 10 yard line pass near side catch made splitting a pair of defenders the receiver dives for the goal line and they're going to mark him down no they do give him the touchdown or do they hold on hold on no they have not I was say, far side officials walking right along the goal line with his hand up as if it is down at the one inch mark so Shepard going to work quickly and go into the a single back formation, Bajan could have taken himself rushing forward, and he stopped short again. Good defensive stand yeah. by Ohio Dominican. That was Sterling Dudney who made the catch and tried to get into the end zone but could not, and now we got a penalty marker down, a little extracurriculars in the scrum at the end of that play. And hopefully they're offsetting or on Ohio Dominican if you're Shepard. You'd yeah. hate to, to lose goal line and, and goal to go. And that ball was down uh, inside of the one yard line. Now the officials will sort out the penalty. These officials assigned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. So that is on Ohio Dominican half the distance to the goal. So the game's first penalty is less than a full yard. Uh, you're talking about centimeters. <laughs> So that puts the ball literally right on the doorstep of the goal line. And let's see what the Rams do as the play call comes from that far sideline. you got to like what Ty Hyatt, the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, is doing with this offense. Pistol formation. It'll be Deontay Glover as the lone set. They will hand it off to Glover, and he will literally step into the end zone for the Shepard Ram touchdown. A great push by the big guys up front. Let's give it to Ostro, Weaver, Ostro, Batson, Fisher. They did the job. And they'll love you for that, giving them credit for that. But good push and also creating a lane wide enough about a hash mark by this near hash mark, creating a wide open lane into the end zone. Shepard with an extra point can take a full two touchdown lead, 13-0, 349. 13-49, rather, remaining in this second quarter of action. What a good start to this game on both sides of the football for the Rams. 
Aiden August to Scriven for the PAT. It's up and it is through. And we shall return in just a moment. 13-49 left in the half and Shepard in front 14 to nothing. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Uh, Deontay Glover had four rushing touchdowns a season ago. He's got his first here in 2019, capping a 15-play, 85-yard, 7-minute, 19-second drive as the Rams take the lead now out to 14 to nothing. Glover goes in technically from one yard out, actually from about a, uh, a few inches a out. A 16th of a yard out. August Scriven with the ensuing kick. Nice high end over end kick. Return man's going to take it pretty much right at the goal line. Along the far side, numbers out to the 10. Runs into his own man before the 20 and then gets taken down at the 21 yard line. And on that return is David Turner. By the way, the drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Learn more at Folk, the number four, WB.com. Boy, the Shepherd Rams owning the time of possession in the early going of this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will be just the tenth offensive play that will be run by Ohio Dominican. Shepherd has run about 28. And you're looking at only 24 yards gained for Ohio Dominican so far. 170 for the Rams. On first down, Ernst on the play action pass has the open receiver. That's the slot man to his left, and David Turner will get the first down and then summon a penalty marker down. We may have a late hit at the end of the play. They'll spot the football, it looks like, at the 33 for a 12-yard gain, and now we'll check that flag. And, of course, in typical football fashion, the flag's against the other team, depending on who's who you're asking. Both oh. teams pointing at one another. One of the offensive linemen at the end of the play knocked down a Ram defender, and I know the O-lineman is saying, look, it was just momentum and the way that the play ended. The official's going to look at it, and let's see, will they, yep, personal foul at the end of the play, and so they will mark it off at the end of the play. So minus 15 will be two penalties, roughly 16 yards now on ODU. They will still get the first down. And the football will get moved all the way back to the 18-yard line. And that's only going to be 15 yards because that penalty officially for the official stats went for zero yards to that first one they had. So before that play, one penalty for zero yards. On a first down and 10 now from their own 18, Ernst wants to throw. Receiver screen near side. Blockers out in front. And the catch made by... Cedric Washington weaves his way out to about the 26. Matt, he cut inside. Looked like if he cut outside, he had a big lane. Oh, he had a wide open lane. Yeah. Chris Jones is coming in to fill that hole, but I think he had a beeline up that uh, center of the field if he wanted to cut back out to the outside, go right along the numbers, uh, but decided to cut back up towards uh, the center of the field between the hash marks, and luckily for Shepard, that probably saved a big gain or a touchdown. Well, on the carry is Frederick Pitt, says uh, ODU going to a little hurry up offense and he's going to pick up four yards they scrimmage from the 26 he takes that one out to the 30 where it's now a first down and 10. Ernst will again have Pitts in the backfield with him there is the snap and the delayed handoff and a nice job by the Ram defender David Eppert the inside linebacker out of Sharando High School start the drumbeat as he made the tackle in the hole a gain of only about a yard 
And Shepard's front seven, I know it sounds like a broken record here so far, but doing a great job of filling holes, creating a new line of scrimmage, not really allowing Ohio Dominican to do anything running the football so far. It's been the passing game so far in this one for them, and even that is just starting to pick up on this drive. Well, they snap back to Ernst. He'll throw to the slot receiver. Great job of looking off the defense and then firing to Cedric Washington. He gets out across the 40 to about the 41, and that gain will be good for another first. Now this offense for Ohio Dominican beginning to get moving a little bit. Yeah, how about about five and a half yards per catch as we have a injured Shepard Ram down on the field, one of the big guys in the trenches holding the back of that left leg. That one looks like it could be in the in the area of a cramp. But you're talking about about five and a half yards of reception for 38 yards total for Ohio Dominican. How about under a yard per carry? Only two rushing yards in this game so far and worth through a quarter and then some. So the front seven doing what they need to do for Shepard so far. Well, and this is a uh, Shepard Ram defense that traditionally has been one of the best in the nation against the run. Looks to be, in, uh, I'm sorry, is yeah. it a 98? That is a 98. So that is the sheed. Well, I'm not sure that's the correct number. Yeah, because that says a kicker. And not judging the body type of kickers, but well, you don't see too many. Nasheed Bridgman, he's listed also as an offensive lineman more than a defensive lineman, maybe making that switch over. On first down and 10 from their own 41 after the brief injury timeout, Ernst wants to throw on the play action pass. Here comes the pressure, rolls to the near side and then throws it into the bench. Uh, jumping up and down a little frustrated is David Wilson as uh, he was one of the ones putting on the pressure. Yeah, there was, there's a flag on the field, and that's got to be intentional grounding. He was outside the tackle box, but I don't think the ball ever got back to the line of scrimmage, and I don't think there was a receiver in that area. So that should be intentional grounding. The quarterback trying to make a case that there was a receiver in the area and he was outside the tackle box. But that should be intentional grounding. That is a textbook definition of intentional grounding right there. Our field judge stepping in to help clarify the call, and they are going to pick up the flag, and the incompletion will stand. Don't agree with that one. Outside the tackle box, the rule is you've got to get it back to the line of scrimmage. And from our angle, now we're not right down the line, but that did not look like he got back to the line of scrimmage on that. That was to get the football away quickly without taking the sack because he had four Shepard Rams right behind him in his tracks. I've never been a fan of the rule. I know you're trying to protect quarterbacks, but, hey, let's give some credit to the defensive guys busting their butts to try to make a sack. It shouldn't be that easy for a quarterback just to get rid of the football to save the yardage and, and save a down. Second down and 10 from their own 41. The Ram defense trying to get the Shepard faithful to their feet. Ernst taking that shotgun snap, hands it off, no place to go. The tailback is met in the hole, and that's Wilson leading the charge to bring down Frederick Pitts, and that should be a loss of a yard. And there you go. Wilson says, hey, I can chase a quarterback and you let him throw it away. I'll take it out on the running back on the next play. This was looking like the best drive of the game so far for Ohio Dominican, but it seems like every time they gain a substantial amount of yards, Shepard's defense picks up the intensity, and here's another big third down, third and 11 upcoming. Third and long, Ernst to throw, open receiver, near side, tries to get it to Pitts out of the backfield along this near sideline, but a little behind him and incomplete. They ran that wheel route, you may call it, very well. He was open, but the pass just not on target. With the incompletion, I've got 8 of 11, 51 yards in the early going for Evan Ernst. Marshall in on that coverage, and that forced the quarterback to try to go out towards the sideline throw, back shoulder, couldn't go over the middle of the field. Is could have been very well intercepted by the Shepherd Rams secondary, or at least batted down to the ground, so had to go back shoulder. The receiver just wasn't quite in the best position to be able to uh, turn his body and get there. Night hard to punt it away. Rodney Dorsey looking to receive their boy, a high, booming, spiraling kick. Dorsey all the way back to his five-yard line, makes the grab, and cannot get away from the tackle of David Turner. If you're Dorsey right there, you're backpedaling at the five-yard line. you got to become a blocker and let that one go. Odds are that's going to get into the end zone. And you're talking about a difference of about 13 yards 
and that being a touchback to where he brought that football back. Hey, there was no way he was going to get back to the 20-yard line there. The kicking team coming down with him quickly. you got to become a blocker right there and you know, hope that one goes into the end zone. 55 yards on that punt. Clearly the best for Neidhart, who earlier had punts of 24, 34, and 25 yards. And now Shepard with their worst starting field position, which will be their own seven-yard line. Had a long drive, their last offensive drive going a little bit north of seven minutes. And unless there's a long play here, it looks like this one could set up to be a very long drive. 10 minutes, 52 seconds left on the clock. Good first run here, getting over the 15-yard line to the 16-yard line for Ty Hebron. Yeah, Hebron taken down by Jaden Davis, the junior defensive back. That stop coming after a pickup of just about nine yards. Rams beginning to establish some things on the ground and then working nicely with what Tyson Bajan has been able to do through the air, as you said earlier, Matt, hitting a bunch of different receivers. On second down and one. Cook in there is a blocking fullback now, actually off the line of scrimmage. So working more with that power pistol formation, with that power to this near side right of the quarterback and running back. Well, a straight ahead run for Hebron, dragging tacklers ahead as he was hit at the 25, bounced off a of one, dragged another across the 30, and gets out to the 32-yard line, and that gain is good for 16 yards. Three carries, 28 yards now for Hebron. Nine first downs for the Rams in this first half. And once again, looking like this year, Shepard is going to have that dual threat at running back, Hebron and Deontay Glover. It seems like the past uh, really decade they've had not just one running back, but two, sometimes even three, that can be competitive. Oh, a little out and up move, and the pass near side intended for Rodney Dorsey, and late flags come in, but it will be pass interference as the defensive back knew he was beat, and that is Godwin Joe who will pick up the penalty. There's a late flag coming back from one of our back officials. I thought there wasn't going to be a flag thrown uh, for a second. A very, very late flag, but a, a good call as the defender had a arm completely around Rodney Dorsey. And a good pump fake on the hesitation for Rodney Dorsey because uh, that was a penalty that probably saved a touchdown if that's an accurate throw from Tyson Bajan. So that will move the football out to the 47. Remember in college it's the 15-yard penalty, not a uh, are you spot a, of the fact. Are you a fan of that? Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Not you on like, the college level. So you, are you a fan of the NFL where it can, can completely change the dynamic of a field? Well, on first down and 10, Tyson Bajan has to change the dynamic of that play. He spun around expecting to hand it off, and the tailback was not there. And so Bajan wisely turns to the line of scrimmage and is able to pick up two yards. It's quarterback sneak for two yards. That's how they drew it up, right? Sure, spin around, pretend you're going to hand it off, and then take off and see what you can get. On two. Ready? Break. At least that's how we would draw <laughs> it up on the playground. Second down and eight. Hebron to the left of the quarterback. Three receivers tightly bunched to that far side. Hand off Hebron, and he will pick up about four or five. That's a nice open field tackle. Alessio Amato, we've called his name a bunch. Yeah, Amato, 31 tackles last year, four interceptions. A defensive-wise... Ohio Dominican, very good and very efficient last year. This is a defense that recovered 11 fumbles here, looking about one a game there. 35 sacks. You're looking at three sacks a game. So, so far, the Shepard Ram offensive line doing yeah. a phenomenal job, not allowing a sack yet. And get this, Matt, 13 interceptions for this Ohio Dominican defense last year, five touchdowns. Third down and four for the Rams from the 48 of Ohio Dominican. Bajan with that shotgun snap, throws along the near side, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Pretty good defense that time by Godwin Joe. No flag on the play as that pass was intended for Sterling Dudney. It's incomplete. And Joe got there early. I don't know if that was a tough play to see for one of our officials to make, but he got there early. No question about it. The pass incompletion for Tyson Bajan. Now has him 12 of 18 for 141 yards. And in to punt the football away, Noah Pohl. That's P-O-H-L. Pohl awaiting that snap. He's got it. 
trying to pin him inside the 20, coming up and calling for and making the fair catch is the return man at about the 15-yard line. Can't tell if that's a six or an eight. That is an eight. So back for this return was Gus Dimmerling. And Pohl looking for a running into the kicker, roughing the kicker penalty. Did not get it. Coach McCook coming about onto the numbers. They're trying to get an explanation on as to why that wasn't a roughing the kicker. I think that's an okay no call. 8-11 remaining in our first half of play. Fifth offensive possession for Ohio Dominican. We'll start at their own 15-yard line. On first down, a pistol formation and the handoff. No, the quarterback kept it. A little play action, and he'll hit the tight end coming near side to the 20 and out to about the 21-yard line. On that catch is Blake Skaradovic. Skaradovic. Let's see where they mark him. Out to about the 22. And that game good for roughly seven yards. It's second down and a three coming. Seen them use the tight end a good bit here in the early going of this one. This time they'll go back to that ground game. Back out there is E.J. Colson. Haven't seen him carry the ball since the second offensive series. Colson taking that handoff and getting two yards out to the 24, and it will bring up a third down and about one. And for what was a balanced attack last year, so far you're going about two passes for every one run here in the first half for Ohio Dominican. On third and one, Colson takes the handoff and gets the first down. He got across the 25 to the 26. Nice little uh, opening off the left side of the line. Good job by the left guard and tackle. It's a gain of two, and the drive stays alive. I've got just three Ohio Dominican first downs, and now just one of five on third down conversion. And this has been the Colson show so far, running the football. Expect to see a little bit more of Fred Pitts, a junior at some point. He had 80 attempts last year, 433 yards. He averaged about 5.4 a carry, so his average a little bit more than what Colson's was. So expect to see him at some point throughout this game as well. On first down and 10, Ernst throwing deep along the near side, a little high for the intended target. That one going to his big wide receiver and incomplete. That is Devonair Concliffe. Concliffe 6'2", 220. Talking with their radio crew earlier, they said last year Concliffe caught one at about, I uh, forget what yard line it was, uh, but ended up basically having two guys hop on his back and he carried them into the end zone for the touchdown. He is a big wide receiver. Heck. Seven touchdowns last year, averaged about 49 yards a game, 540 total receiving yards, 36 receptions. So you know he's more of a red zone threat with seven touchdowns on just 36 receptions. Second and 10 from their own 26. A little read option, and the quarterback keeps it, and Ernst to force out of bounds along the near side. I think he's got that first down. He was looking at the sticks the whole time, and eventually Lawrence Tucker, a defensive back, was able to force him out. That was the first gotcha of the season for me. I followed the running back the entire way for the first five or six yards on that run. Uh, that gained good for nine yards, and he did not get the first down. So he stepped out just ahead of that first down marker. So on third down and one, snaps a little high, and the give is to Colson. Or nope, he kept it again. And Ernst around that right side, able to pick up about two to the 37. And there's the first got you of the season. That read really option, if you can do it well, yep, it is very tricky, not only for us, but I'm sure for defenses down on the field. I was going to say, it's okay if you fool us. Yeah. It's the defensive guy that the Rams are hoping you don't fool. Well, they picked up a couple of first downs in this possession. Now just four on the ball game. Ernst under pressure, lets the pass go. Catch made far side, but uh, down immediately. Looked to me like David Turner was on the ground as he was making that catch for a loss of two. Kind of had the knee down as he made the catch. Kyle Smith coming off that backside in the face very quickly of Evan Ernst. Forced that low throw. So now with the football back at the 35-yard line, second down and a 12 coming. We've got 5-10 on a running second quarter clock, and it's a 14 to nothing. Shepard lead, a 40-yard touchdown pass Bajan to Phelps and a less than one-yard touchdown run 
for Glover. Screen pass near side, receiver with the catch and slips through a tackle getting to the sideline and getting into Ram territory. That reception made by Cedric Washington. Lawrence Tucker not quite able to bring down Washington there, just had him around the legs. Good job by Washington, more high stepping than anything just to get out of that tackle. An injured Ram is down, and that looks to be Ricky Robinson. The training crew out to tend to him. They will spot the football at that Ram 49-yard line. So that gain was good for just about 16 yards. So beginning to uh, get the offense rolling. This will be the ninth play of this possession, which is the longest possession that Ohio Dominican has had here in this first half and this is an offense that last year uh, very strong averaged about 40 and a half points a game and 439 yards a game so the Shepherd defense doing a very stellar job in this first yep. half absolutely and again it's a completely new opponent and so I think both of these teams while Shepherd has the 14-0 lead one of those, a long drive, one of them on just a big play to Devin Phelps. I think both teams have done a pretty good job so far for this being completely new opponent to them and it being a week one of a new season. First down and 10 from the Ram 49 as the injured Ram player off the field. Snap back and Ernst hands it off. And boy, that was a slow developing play and Colson hit immediately as he took that handoff and goes down for the loss on the play. And that Ram defender looks to be, is that a 4-3? It is. The 4-3 that is on our roster is Dustin Fisher, who's listed as a fullback tight end. Uh, he wasn't a fullback or tight end there. He came in and made the big hit. Well, that was a play where, I, if that's the actual play call, that's a very strange and slow-moving play. It looked like Colson was going to swing out to catch the football. as more of a screen or a swing pass out of the backfield. And then at the last minute, stopped and came, and it looked like Ernst was ready to hand the ball off immediately. So I think that may have been more of a busted play rather than a slow-developing play, but injury down on the field. Another Ram injury. A little slow to get up is going to be Scott Dixon, but is to his feet and will make his way to the far sideline. Plenty of action around both of these conferences. The great Midwest Athletic Conference, the GMAC, all of their games being played today out of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. We've already had one, two, three, four, five, six games played. Five were played on Thursday. One was played last night. Shepard will have a Thursday game coming up this year at Lock Haven. That one on the 6th of October. Second down and 15 now from their own 46. Ernst wants to throw, has some time. Now the pocket collapses, rolling to that far side. Let's that pass go, and coming back to make the catch, going down to the ground to get it, was Cedric Washington. And they will mark it, it looks like, back at the 46 of Shepard. Great job by Washington going down to get that. Megan Cherry cradled the arms underneath not skipping in off the turf and that was a good job by Ernst creating a new pocket uh, the pocket collapsing in front of him rolled out to the back side and had to throw on the run and still for being on the run made a very accurate throw to only where Washington could go get that football yeah market at the Ram 44 yard line Shepard now shows blitz as it's a third down and about five coming up for Ohio Dominican and Blackman Herbert coming in showing blitz and retreats back into the secondary and we're gonna have a timeout Ohio Dominican it looks like and probably a wise time out of big situation here in the game uh, threes are wild third down 333 remaining here in the second quarter of action let's take a 60 second break and then come back with Shepard leading 14 to nothing when will I be able to retire how do I make the most of the money I have how do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones I'm Philip McCoy financial advisor with the Marius group a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, Call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. 
Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Coming out of the Ohio Dominican timeout, a third down and five from the Ram 44-yard line. 11th play of the possession, their best drive so far. And back to throw, Ernst in trouble, flush from the pocket, rolls far side, now throws, catch made, receiver hit, and they're going to mark him, it looks like, just shy of the 40-yard line. He did not get the first down, and that looks to be Colson out of the backfield who made the catch. There uh, is uh, apparently a penalty marker down, and I thought there should be one at the line. Did it not look like the entire right side of the line moved early? It did. It did, but that's in the secondary, so that's going to be a holding or a pass interference one way or another. That's in the area what looks like it could be a hold a defensively, still waiting for that final. And it is a defensive holding by the Rams, so take away a, a tricky situation on what to do on fourth and short from the 40-yard line. And... That's going to give Ohio Dominican a first down. It was a great defensive stop for Shepard on a third and medium. I've got that as just the first penalty on the Rams, and it ends up giving a first down to Ohio Dominican. First down and 10 now from that Ram 34-yard line. It's directly in front of our broadcast position. Out of the shotgun, Ernst to throw, has some time. Pocket collapses, dumps it off. Colson with the catch and is wrapped up, escapes that tackle, but some help coming, and eventually the tackle is made. David Eppert was the first to hit him, helping to come up and finish off that play. Delonte Berry, the former Jefferson standout from nearby. And that's going to be a completion for negative three yards. As a, I'm not sure a sack would have been much worse there. Second 13. 12 of 16 passing, 72 yards for Evan Ernst is so far in this one. Second and 13 coming from that Ram 37. 12th play of the possession. This drive started with 8-11 to play in the second quarter. Down to 2:26 on that running clock. Ernst to throw, near side. Hits his tight end or fullback. And he will get to the sideline inside the 35, mark him down to about the 31-yard line. Good job by Lawrence Tucker coming in to make that play. That's a big guy to lower your shoulder and come in and try to tackle. Uh, coming in from the secondary, did a good job of lowering his position, making sure he got him at the waist rather than trying to tackle him up high. And now under two minutes to play here in the first half for High Dominican. He wants to stay in this ball game and have a shorter margin in that second half. They need to find the end zone now. That was Matt Barber with the reception. He's listed at 6'5", only listed at 2'10". I don't little, buy it. Looks a Not little bigger. one second. Out of the shotgun, the snap again to Ernst. Has some time. Looks over the middle. Throws that deep slant and in and out of the hands of the intended target. That one for Danier Concliffe. And uh, I think he uh, saw the footsteps of yeah. uh, Blackman Herbert coming in there because he was ready to take somebody's head off. My apologies, that is Devonair Concliffe. One of the rosters actually has a Y in there instead of a V. So Devonair Concliffe could not pull it in. And with the incompletion, it brings up a fourth down and seven from the Ram 31. If you're not going to punt, this would be a long field goal. So Ohio Dominican will go for it. Two receivers out to the wide side, right, two here to the left. Now a man in motion will put three to that right side. They'll dump it off to the back, out of the backfield. Colson, can he get that first down? Slips the tackle, and he does get the first down. Inside the 20 and down to the 16-yard line. He got away from Mike Blackman Herbert and was able to get the first down. Yeah, good move out of the flats right there. Blackman Herbert broke down, but just, I think, broke down, honestly, uh, about a second too early and allowed uh, the receiver, the running back out of the backfield to make uh, that quick move right right at the end to get the first down and then some. Yep, he got to the 15, a pickup of 16 yards and on first down. Quarterback keeps it, this time on the read option, wrapping him up, Dustin Fisher, and slings him down. And there's going to be the second timeout used by Ohio Dominican, 106 left here in the first half. And wondered if they would use it after the last play, but I think they wanted to save two for uh, hopefully inside one minute, but not going to be able to get there. That was a great job defensively uh, staying home and whether he, uh, whether, uh, Ernst gave that off or kept it himself. That was going to be a tackle for a loss either way. 
14 of 19 in this first half unofficially for Evan Ernst. He has thrown for 94 yards. Also has three carries for 11 yards. The Rams have yet to get to him for a sack, but they have certainly put a lot of pressure on him. And that has led to some incompletions. This is the best drive by far for Ohio Dominican. Their first three possessions, three plays and out. Their fourth possession, they managed a pair of first downs before eventually punting the football. And this possession, they have run seven minutes off the clock to this point. So overall, we've seen now one lengthy possession for each team. Shepard's last scoring drive was just north of seven minutes. Yeah, 15 plays, 85 yards, seven minutes and 19 seconds. So now one seven-plus minute drive for each one of these teams, and this one could go above eight minutes, depending on how much longer Ohio Dominican has the football. Second and ten upcoming, one of six remaining on this first half clock. On second down and ten, Ernst to throw, and the ball tipped up into the air and then caught one of the linebackers for Shepard, tipped it into the air, and Colson was there to grab the deflection and pick up positive yards down to the 11. Again, all how you draw it up. Yeah, I don't think you draw it quite Allow, like allow that. the linebacker to deflect it, then have your, your back in the backfield come catch it at the line of scrimmage. Under a minute now, 40 seconds and counting, third down and seven from the 10-yard line, quick out to the outside, and nowhere to go, good gang tackle by the Rams on the far side of the field, going nowhere, fourth down upcoming. David Turner on the reception, let's see where they're gonna spot it, looks like right back at the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play, and it will bring up a fourth down and about seven. And I wonder why Ohio Dominican is calling a timeout now. Well, 17 seconds yeah, left. Yeah, but on a fourth down, you would expect at this point in the field, you're kicking a field goal and getting points before the half. If you're doing that, well, why are you leaving time on the clock for Shepard to possibly return the ball for a touchdown? If I'm Ohio Dominican here, I'm okay with taking a timeout. Obviously, you don't want to rush a field goal if you got one timeout left. But I'm waiting until there's about four seconds on the clock before calling that timeout. I'm not sure I get the, the clock management here. I'm not sure whether they're going to go for the field goal or not. We should add that uh, their kicker, Jed Quackenbush, we found out literally just moments before going on the air, apparently injured, and Kyle Lamming, we were told, would be the one who would be handling the kicking duties. So let's see if they send Lamming on to try this uh, field goal. Typically, you go about seven yards back. So if that is the case, you would be talking about a 27-yard field goal. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to do, which, again, is why I question why you called a timeout with 17 seconds. I mean, maybe it wasn't a guarantee they were going to kick the field goal. Maybe there had to be some, some conversation. But either way, with four seconds, either going to be the last play of the well, – I guess they could have got a first down. I don't know. I'm, I'm still questioning that the timeout was 17 seconds left. They'll set it down, actually, at the – 18, so a 28-yard field goal. Snap is back, placement down, and that kick is up, and it is through, and 12 seconds left on the clock. Let's take a 60-second break and then come back to Rams Stadium. ODU on the board, but Shepard with the lead, 14-3. to Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. For 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way.
So Kyle Lamming with the ensuing kickoff, a nice high, deep kick that goes a few yards deep into the end zone, bounces out of the back of the end zone for a touchback, and Shepard with 12 seconds left will have it at their own 25. The scoring drive for Ohio Dominican, 18 plays, 75 yards, 7 minutes, 59 seconds, and it's the 28-yard field goal from Kyle Lamming that has the Panthers on the board as they trail 14-3. How do you handle this if you're Rams second-year head coach Ernie McCook? You taking a knee and going into the locker room? Yeah, I'm sitting on it. Looks like they're going to get into the, uh, the, I guess you can't call it the victory formation at halftime, but they're going to the, drop to a knee. And I'm trying to remember the last the time. we have the lead formation. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw Tyson Bage or any Shepard quarterback under center <laughs> twice in one half. And it's now happened twice on that quarterback sneak and now because they're usually purely a shotgun team. But as the clock now winds down to zero, Shepard will take a 14-3 lead into the half. Yeah, very strong first half for the Rams. Uh, they got the offense moving with a couple of scoring possessions and the defense. Well, uh, bent but really did not break. A very lengthy drive but gave up only three to Ohio Dominican to end the first half. We'll recap the scoring. We'll check out what's going on elsewhere around both of these conferences, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference as well as the Great Midwest Athletic Conference. We'll see what's happening in some Division I games as well. It's all on our halftime show brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, the best in health care, close to home. At the intermission here at Ram Stadium with your score, Shepard 14, Ohio Dominican 3. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you back into Ram Stadium. We are at the half. Our halftime brought to you by WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, the best in healthcare, close to home. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. Caleb Valero at the studio. Thanks to our on-site director, Joseph Dagg. A video producer is Jason Kerr. Operating cameras today, Eric Sterick. Jenny Kuhn and Andrew Ford. John Alderton is an on-site producer as well. It's been an entertaining first half, Matt. I think we got just what we expected in this matchup as we recap the scoring. Shepard got the opening possession, picked up a first down, but ultimately had to punt after six offensive plays. Ohio Dominican went three and out. They gave it back to Shepard on a short punt, and the Rams took advantage of the field position with a three-play, 52-yard drive in a minute and 21 seconds and it was the speed of Devin Phelps getting behind the defense and Tyson Bajan hit him for the 40-yard scoring strike. Yeah, no real need to draw that one up and you simplify it. Devin Phelps 
right to the post. He started on the far side of the field as that slot receiver and just went straight to the post, straight to the scoreboard, and beat the defender by about four yards. It was a ball that was slightly, and I can't emphasize that enough, slightly underthrown by Tyson Bage. And if the defender's any closer, you may have a deflected pass as the corner, or the safety rather, and did extend fully to try to tip that play, tip the ball at the last minute. But uh, still a great throw from that distance. And that's a play that will probably be uh, hitting stride later on in the season. But just great speed by Devin Phelps. And uh, that's been the biggest and longest play of this game so far. Other than that, it's been a lot of quick throws and a lot of running the football. And a lot of good defense. Ohio Dominican on their third possession went three and out, gave it back to Shepard, and the Rams turned it over. An INT for Alicio Amato set up Ohio Dominican with great field position, but they could not take advantage as the Ram defense held. Shepard would get the football back and then put together a 15-play, 85-yard drive, seven minutes, 19 seconds off the clock. It was a... Technically one yard touchdown for Deontay Glover, but that ball right at the doorstep as a half the distance of the goal penalty had put it right on the goal line, and the Rams had a 14 to nothing lead. Ohio Dominican would get on the board on their fifth and final possession of the first half. Took over with 8-11 to play in the half. You're thinking the Rams are getting the football back, right? Not so much. Well, they did. With 12 seconds <laughs> left, yeah. And, and again, they shouldn't have had 12 seconds. That was a... Awful, awful job of time management. 18 plays, 75 yards, 7 minutes and 59 seconds. The length of the drive for Ohio Dominican. They uh, had to settle for the 28-yard field goal. I say settle because with more time, perhaps some different play calls and they're able to get into the end zone. But uh, time not their friend in that situation. And so they had to call on their place kicker, uh, Kyle Lamming, who is uh, spelling and Jed Quackenbush, who was injured and could not kick today in the 28-yard field goal, has us at the half at 14-3, to Shepard out in front. Which is really unfortunate, not only injury-wise, but how fun would it have been to say Quackenbush all game? It certainly would have been. Well, these two teams in the locker room getting some instruction. Let's see which team can come out and execute any of those game adjustments. I don't know how many adjustments you make. Uh, both teams but, have yeah. played well. You just got to come back out and keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, they've done everything that when you look at keys to the game, they've st both teams have stayed relatively balanced. Ohio Dominican a little more balanced later in uh, that first half uh, than in the first quarter. But you look at both teams, they were pretty even when it comes to running the football, passing the football, football, and both front sevens I thought played extremely well, give or take a few plays here and there. All right, let's take a break and then come back with more of our WVU Medicine halftime show. We are at the break. It's the Shepherd Rams leading Ohio Dominican 14-3. to If you hang the WVU Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. Evolving what we try to do as physicians and as a health system and organization is the mission of WVU Medicine and it's an exciting mission to be a part of. With the knowledge and the, the years of practice that they've put into this institution, you know, they, they know a lot, they can help you and they've helped me a lot. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall uh, care. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. We welcome you back into Rams Stadium. Shepard with a 14-3 lead over Ohio Dominican here at the half. Time for us to check out 
scores in action from around the two conferences and uh, even uh, other areas of Super Region 1. Hey, let's start here in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. There were five games on Thursday night. Slippery Rock got the victory at Wayne State 62-37. Lockhaven at home took care of Lincoln 57-13. Gannon went on the road for a 14-7 victory at Southern Connecticut State. Mercyhurst with a 21-16 home victory over Lake Erie and Millersville a 21 to 20 win at pace there was one PSAC game last night and that had Cal with a victory at St. Anselm out of the Northeast 10 59 to 13 that sets up the rest of the action today and uh, that includes Bentley at Westchester Assumption at Cutstown Shippensburg hosting Clarion New Haven visiting IUP Stone Hill is at Bloomsburg Wagner entertains East Stroudsburg and Edinburgh on the road at Grand Valley State. Not any scores on this. I was going to say, can I interest you in some of those scores, sir? Yes, please. How about in the third quarter, Kutztown over Assumption, 41-9. to That gives you an idea how good Assumption or how good Kutztown is going to be this year. Bentley and Westchester in the third quarter as well, and knotted up at 7. New Haven and IUP, a real tight game so far. That game inching closer to the half, 14-7 IUP ahead in that one. Shippensburg? Taking on Clarion. Get this one, Matt. 27 nothing, Clarion. So that is one that I wasn't really expecting there. Shippensburg, I expected to be a little bit stronger that one in the second quarter. And those other games either not started, no scoring updates. The Stonehill Bloomsburg game, no score yet. That one just started about 20 minutes ago. And then the games tonight, Wagner East Stroudsburg and Edinburgh. Grand Valley. Where do you want to go next? You want well, to go to the GMAC? Yeah, let's look at the GMAC because uh, an old MEC foe, Glenville State is at Alderson Broadus, but that game not until 7 o'clock tonight. You also have a 7.30 start time, Finlay at Ferris State. And it looks like other games should be going on, although Walsh at Duquesne. Rob Mario's Duquesne. grounds. That's not until 4 o'clock. And Concordia, Michigan at Kentucky Wesleyan not kicking off until 2. So it looks like three games that might be going on at this time. Well, right now in the GMF, and then we'll switch to the Mountain East because that's where some of those scoring updates will be based on the page we're using. D2Football.com, by the way. Phenomenal website for information and scores from around all Division II football. A Michigan Tech taking on Hillsdale. 10-7 that one in the second quarter. Michigan Tech ahead. Tiffin of the Dragons. Uh, Carrington Conti, former linebacker I played with in his senior season up at Tiffin right now. So I hope the Dragons are doing well. And they are. 16-3 their lead over Northwood in the second quarter. And the game that just started was Kentucky Wesleyan at Concord or taking on Concordia. And at 4 p.m. it's Duquesne or Duquesne taking on a Walsh. Let's quickly uh, take a look at the Mountain East Conference. We're not looking for a Shepherd Ram logo in there. <laughs> not sure I'm going to use that. Only three games today, Matt. That's nuts. I think that's insane. But three games today, all were 12 noon kickoffs in the third quarter. Notre Dame leading Concord 23-10. Notre Dame, the preseason number 11 team in the country. Urbana taking on West Virginia Wesleyan. 14-0 Urbana with the lead in that one. And then Wheeling at Jesuit. Again, a strange thing to see on a football page. Uh, but 14-0 Wheeling down taking on West Liberty. You mentioned earlier uh, Hillsdale and their matchup today against Michigan Tech. If you look at the preseason rankings in the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, Ohio Dominican with 40 points in the voting and Hillsdale with 47. Hillsdale received six first place votes and uh, take that number one spot. And Finlay, 37 points total. They got the other two first place votes but uh, point-wise, ended up behind Ohio Dominican. So Ohio Dominican picked to finish second. At the same time, Shepard picked to finish second behind Westchester in the East Division of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. And real quick, it, just to finish out in Division One football, some scores of interest. The Mountaineers losing Missouri 31-0. The 650 remaining in the third quarter of that one. It was a tight game between Boise State and Marshall last night. Did you yes. see the, the final score of that one? 14 Marshall took the 7 nothing lead and couldn't get in the end zone. The rest of the game, Boise State getting the 14-7 win. What was the over-under on that one? About 50-some? Yeah, mean, something like that. That was supposed to be a wide open Maybe this game. is the year people can hammer the under. <laughs> Not happening often. And finishing out with some other ranked games, Army and Michigan 
uh, knotted up at 14. That game, 2.24 left in the third quarter. And my Terps all over number 21, Syracuse, 49 to 20, 5.15 remaining in the third quarter of that one. Wow. All right, those are some scores from around Division II and Division I college football. We are at the half here at Rams Stadium. Shepard on top of Ohio Dominican by a 14-3 score. When we come back, we'll take a look at the numbers from the first half. This is Shepard Ram Football on TV10. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. We welcome you back into the WBU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center halftime show, the best in healthcare close to home. Not the halftime show, but the Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers. Uh, along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller, and the players getting back out onto the field, beginning some warm ups. The sun shining here at Rams Stadium. It's been a beautiful afternoon for football, and it has been a good game and the stats are going to bear that out they're brought to you by joe ferretti law office in martinsburg matt what do we got a total yard so far offensively uh, for ohio dominican 33 plays 119 yards for shepherd uh, 33 plays 199 yards it was 200 before that uh, kneel at the end of the first half by tyson uh, Bajan running the football uh, wise for Ohio Dominican, 12 rushes, 26 yards. Shepard, 14 rushes, 58 yards. A passing yards for Ohio Dominican, 93, 141 for the Shepard Rams. Some individual numbers. You want to start with first, Matt? Uh, let's start with Ohio Dominican. Ohio Dominican running the football. Fred Pitts, uh, 14 yards on the ground. Evan Ernst, 12 yards on the ground. E.J. Colson, 5 yards on the ground. Passing the football. Evan Ernst, 16 for 21, 93 yards. No touchdowns, no sacks, no interceptions. Receiving-wise, uh, David Turner, uh, 15 yards on five receptions. Utah Colson, four receptions, 22 yards. Uh, Washington, uh, 33 yards on three receptions. For Shepard, uh, going to rushing the football. Ty Hebron and Deontay Glover getting the majority of the work. Tyson Bajan also added three rushes, but for Hebron, it was four rushes, 31 yards, and for Glover, 27 yards on five attempts, one touchdown for Deontay Glover. And then Tyson Bajan, a total was 19, was 12 for 19 with one interception and one touchdown. His longest throw was 43 yards. Uh, Devin Phelps, two receptions, 45 yards. Greg Leonard, two receptions, 12 yards. Ty Hebron, one reception. That was the long, a 43-yard run up this near sideline back in that first quarter. And then Rodney Dorsey, seems like we called his name more than this, which is two receptions for 12 yards. Tackles, uh, Chris Lane leading the way for Shepard, totally outlasting everybody. Eight tackles in that first half and Dales with four tackles along with Chris Green, three for Ohio Dominican. There are your first half 
stats. And those stats brought to you by Joe Ferretti Law Office, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Vehicle accidents, slip and fall, medical malpractice, they handle it all. Call the Joe Ferretti Law Office at 304-596-8854 for a free consultation. Oh, we wrap up the halftime show with a second-half kick after this 60-second break. Let's take a 60-second break, and then we're back to Rams Stadium for your second half of action with Shepard leading Ohio Dominican by a score of 14-3. to Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local area agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Just about ready to get our second half underway. Ohio Dominican will get the football. They deferred at the beginning of the ball game as they wanted an opportunity to take this football to start the second half. We'll see if they have gained a little momentum by putting the three points on the board at the end of that first half. That lengthy drive leading to three. See if that Shepard defense may be caught their breath in the locker room and can come back out and get back to what they had done in some of those early possessions as they held Ohio Dominican to no first downs through their first three possessions and only two first downs through the first four possessions. Ohio Dominican putting together one, two, three, four, five first downs in that field goal drive. One thing I want to touch on that we didn't really touch on in the uh, halftime show was how cleanly played this football game has been uh, for it being week one of the season. Not talking just interception or turnover-wise, but also penalty-wise. You're looking at just four total penalties combined for both teams and just 35 yards. That is really low for a first half of football the first week of the season. That just shows how well coached both of these football teams are. Hayden August to Scriven with the kickoff down into the near front corner of the end zone. Letting it go by is David Turner, and it goes out of bounds. Uh, on the bounce after hitting in the end zone, and that will be a touchback. Very well-placed kick for Hayden August Scriven. So Ohio Dominican, first possession of the second half will start at their own 25-yard line. They will start with three receivers heading out to the wide side of the field left. Ball on the near side, hash mark as they will move from left to right from our position here. The Rams with four defensive down linemen. A back just to the left of the quarterback as Evan Ernst awaits that snap and movement along the offensive front. Just as I talk about how cleanly this game has been played, and there you go. There's that broadcaster's jinx you don't believe in. Uh, they call it on 79 offense. It's that whole right side of the offensive line. Yeah, Vinny Verbier, but uh, may well have been the center who didn't snap the football. Move it back to the 20-yard line. That's uh, four penalties now for 30 yards. Whistled against ODU, and on first down and 15, Ernst has the shotgun snap and gives the pitch to Colson. Quickly spun down. That's the Rams' Chris Jones, the defensive back, who fought off the block of the wide receiver and got in there to make the stop. Yeah, good job by Chris Jones. You said it perfectly, just getting off his initial block and not necessarily going in there and wrapping up to get the tackle, but just throwing his body in there and altering the course of where that running back wanted to go in the backfield. Colson going to lose, it looks like, about three yards. And on second down and long, here is a quick pass going to Colson. 
who's grabbed in the backfield by David Wilson and takes him down for another loss on the play. This one all the way back inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And that's an adjustment that obviously Coach Klein has made at the halftime break. It's no different game plan for Ohio Dominican, just trying quick passes out of the backfield, order receivers on the outside so far. It's been running backs out of the backfield with Colson. Uh, but they're staying home, and that was a good adjustment that Coach Klein made. And we're having another uh, swing pass at the outside. This one still defended very well, being pushed and using the sideline as an extra defender, a host of Shepard Rams there. And they will not get back to the original line of scrimmage. And that will bring up a fourth and long punt team going to have to come out on this one. Good defensive stand uh, for the Shepard Rams on the first drive of this second half. Yeah, David Turner with that reception, able to get about 13 yards, but it will not be enough as the football at the 22 yard line and the punting unit is on. Let's see what Logan Neidhart can do. Average 34 and a half yards of punts in that first half. He awaits the snap as he stands back at the eight yard line. Snap is back in that punt away. High spiraling kick. Fair catch being called for and that fair catch made by Rodney Dorsey. He makes that catch at the 36-yard line. And that gain, or excuse me, punt, I should say, good for 42 yards. Now the Rams with their first second half possession, 13.03 to play in the third. Let's see if the Rams can get something going after a solid first half with those 199 yards. From the 36 on first down, our officiating crew getting together for a moment. I think we're making sure of the right football being in the game. Don't want the kicking ball in there. Yeah, you remember football practices, right? Kickers had their balls that kicking, they would go yep. beat the tar out of, but that was not a ball you wanted your quarterback throwing or handing off. Not quite as much grip on those. <laughs> Getting the start in the backfield in the second half is Ty Hebron. In the first half, it was Deontay Glover on that opening possession. Hebron with a strong first half of 31 yards on four carries. He is the back in the pistol formation, and he takes that handoff and off the left side of the line, runs into the back of the pile, shifts a little bit to his right, and will pick up, it looks like, about two yards out to the 38. Good push off that to left side, but those holds filled nicely by the linebackers. Talking earlier again with the radio crew for ODU, and they were letting us know that the linebacking core really a key component to this defense. They showed it there, helping to fill that hole. Stop the ball carrier after just a two-yard gain. Yeah, Second Chris, and eight. Chris Green doing a good job of filling that hole there for Ohio Dominican. Back to throw. Bajan looking over the middle. Let's it go. Has the open receiver. That is Dorsey at the 45 of ODU. Getting to the near side. Numbers inside the 40 down to about the 37 before taking down by Gus Dimmerling. And that is the risk you take if you're Ohio Dominican playing a zone defense right there. That was just a case where Dorsey did a good job of splitting the zone. And that's an easy pitch and catch all day for Tyson Bajan, whoever the receiver is splitting the uh, back side of that zone and the intermediate side of that zone that Ohio Dominican's playing. 25 yards on that pass completion. 166 passing yards now for Bajant. And on first down and 10, Bajant again wants to throw, dumps it off out of the backfield. That's Deontay Glover with the catch, and he'll get to the 30-yard line, hit and taken down from behind. Good job by Bajant. Good coverage downfield, and he finds his back out of the backfield to pick up positive yards. Those of you may be looking at Tyson Bajan this year and wondering if that's a new number he's wearing. It is. <laughs> or the number nine last year. Apparently that was a number given to him, but also the number of previous quarterback, Connor Jessup, decided that he wanted to hey, he wanted to last year but it wasn't available and just wanted to make his own identity here at Shepard. So that is why he's wearing the number two this year. They give to Glover again off that left side. Nowhere to go and wrapped up right at the 30-yard line. They even lose about a half yard on that. And a nice play in the interior by Aaron Smoot Baker, the junior defensive lineman who wrapped him up and dragged him down. No gain for Deontay Glover. He's up to six carries now. He's got 24 rushing yards, and it will bring up a third down and a long two, close to three yards, if you will, for the first down. 
big third down for Shepard in the first half. The Rams were four of seven on third down conversions. Pistol formation, tight slot to the right. Wide slot out there as well. Handoff going to Hebron, and Hebron off the left side of the line. Dives forward, trying to get what he can, but not much doing. Rich Jones, a sophomore defensive back, helping to fill the hole. Got some help from Dawson Dales as well. We'll call it a gain of one down to the 29-yard line, and now it'll bring up fourth down and still about two. Yeah, not sure as much of a dive by Hebron as he it tripped himself up. Really nobody had his feet and made that initial cut, and I think his feet just got crossed up and uh, dove forward unintentionally. And it's unfortunate because he had a lane to the outside, probably could have bounced it to the outside and fought to the sticks and maybe even turned up field and got a few yards more time out on the field as head coach Ernie McCook wants to talk about this one. You're on the outskirts of field goal range uh, for Hayden August Scrivens. And so this is probably what the conversation is going to be is it looks like offense, special teams, uh, most of the team except for the defense is out at about the 40-yard line right now. You're looking at about a 46 to 47 yard field goal attempt. You know August Scriven has the leg for that as you've watched his kickoffs going into and has had one completely out of the back of the end zone. They will not kick the ball here. August Scriven's just walked back onto the sideline. So they are going to go for it here on a fourth and two. Shepard did not attempt a fourth down in that first half. Ohio Dominican did. They converted on theirs. Let's see what Shepard will do as once again Hebron will be in the backfield. And it looks like they will bring in the fullback slash H-back, Michael McCook. And that power pistol to the right side again. Devin Phelps twitches. Luckily that wasn't a false start. He had uh, come back completely set as we have a waggle now to the back side. And the play action pass and the catch is made by Devin Phelps at the 20-yard line. And he wrestles away from a defender and gets down to the 16-yard line. That one good for 13 yards and a ram first down. And again, that play is lucky. Phelps is coming in motion a bit. And luckily that was not a false start because he initiated a coming in motion then quickly stopped before really going completely in motion. So I think the Rams are lucky to get away with that one. That very easily could have been a five-yard penalty. First and 10 now from the 16. Handoff going to Deontay Glover, looking to turn the corner on the right side. He'll pick up a positive gain of just about three yards. So second and a seven coming. Eighth play of this opening possession of the second half for the Rams. And the one thing you got to look at is you look at the flags here in the end zone is the wind is going left to right, pushing towards uh, the Ken J. Boone Fieldhouse. So if you're uh, coming down to a kick, uh, you're going to have the wind at your back, maybe get a few more yards out of a kick on a field goal attempt if you're moving right to left. Now the Rams, I'm sure, not thinking field goal. They want it in the end zone. On second down and seven, there's that little touch pass again going to the man in motion. That's Dorsey who started in motion from left to right, took the little touch pass from Bajan, stayed inbounds along the far side and broke an initial tackle to pick up about four more yards. They're going to spot it all the way down to the two-yard line. Boy, how about 11 yards on that one? Ninth play of the possession coming. First down and goal to go. The Rams with three first downs in this possession. Starting the drive at their own 36. Already with a 14-3 lead and Shepard looking to add more. Pistol formation and that's... Hebron in the backfield, takes that handoff off the right side of the line, slips through a tackle, gets down to the goal line, and let's see, did he lose the football? He lost the football, and it's recovered by ODU. No way. Gus Dimmerling comes up with the loose football. There's a question about whether that was going to be in the end zone or down by contact. Seemed awful late for that ball to pop out for him to not be down on the turf, but apparently the ball... Uh, coming out late, very late, right before hitting the ground, and ODU recovering it in the end zone, and that's a tough one to swallow if you're Shepard. Oh, my Knocking yes. on the doorstep like that and not able to punch it in. So the football will come out to the 20-yard line. Ohio Dominican dodges a bullet as they will take over with 8.03 to play in the third and still down just 14-3. to 
On first down, Ernst out of the gun. The Rams showing blitz. Here they come. He hands it off. Straight ahead running. Oh, boy, that may be a huge collision right there. Chris as... Jones, nice job coming in and filling yeah. that hole in a hard hit right at the point of contact. Number 12 listed as Hassan Marshall, who was right there to help him make that hit on the running back. That was Pitts on the carry. And he will pick up a couple, it looks like. They'll set it down out close to the 23, so give him three, second down and at seven. Burns back to throw, gives a little pump fake, now looks deep along the near side, has an open receiver. The grab is made, the receiver with a blocker out in front, down the near sideline to the 30, 20, 10, 5, and into the end zone. It will be a touchdown for Ohio Dominican as Devonair Concliffe pulls it in and a sprint down the sideline. It covers 77 yards. And a bit of a pump fake there. Chris Jones bit on the pump fake, and I think if that ball's thrown accurately, not underthrown, that's a touchdown either way. It was underthrown. Uh, Conleaf coming back to make the play, and his other receivers coming up uh, to create a wall to the left side. He used that sideline, went untouched into the end zone, and uh, what a turn of events. Shepard knocking on the doorstep at one end, and then two plays later, a long pass. And Ohio Dominican just an extra point away from making this a four-point ball game. There is the snap and the placement and the kick on the way. And it is up and through. Kyle Lamming adds that PAT. And we take a break with 7.20 to play in the third. It's a whole new ball game as ODU draws a little closer. It is Shepard 14, Ohio Dominican 10. I picked Shepherd University because I'm not just a number. One of the things that surprised me is how friendly everyone is. I like being able to walk down the street and have the professors recognize me my name. I'm constantly learning. But it also has taught me so much about myself and about what I want to do with my future. The location at Shepherd is amazing. Cities like Washington, D.C., Baltimore are only about an hour, hour and a half away. You just got to see it. Once you see it, it just takes your heart. Connect your passion with a purpose at Ohio Dominican University. My passion is computers. My purpose is to use my software engineering degree to develop technologies that will improve people's lives. My passion is business. My purpose is to use my MBA to help my business grow and create jobs. My passion is my family. My purpose is to advance my career and make a better life for my kids. Ohio Dominican University. Connect your passion with a purpose. Well, the ensuing kickoff for Kyle Lamming. He approaches with the ball on the tee at the 35, kicking from left to right. High but short kick. It's going to come up, touch a Ram player, who then grabs it and gets immediately taken down. I believe that's Kendall Carter. Yeah, it was a 20. Two 20s on well, the roster. Well, there's two One 20s. So no, that's it. Michael Freeman, I bet you. He's the junior yeah. wide receiver. So Freeman able to corral that one. But the Rams, with some tough starting field position, back around their own. 18 yard line. Let's check out that drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Learn more at Folk for WB.com. After the fumble recovery in the end zone, two plays, 80 yards, took just 43 seconds. The touchdown pass going from Evan Ernst to Devonair Concleef, 77 yards for the score. Well, Bajan back to throw on first down, slings it out near side, a little slot receiver screen, but could not connect with Rodney Dorsey. The pass is incomplete. Yeah, Bajan, look, he was trying to go for more of a slant, Dorsey more of a swing pattern. Also may have heard some footsteps moving in quickly. Was Amato. Really? Called his name quite a few times today, Alicio Amato, one of the leading tacklers from last year. And there's a reason why another year older, another year wiser. He's had a very good game to, to start this season for Ohio Dominican. Feeling old Mo changing sides just a little bit. Hand off Deontay Glover. And that play gets strung out towards the sideline. Glover kind of tiptoeing, moving to his right, was looking for some kind of a cutback lane, and there just was none as that defense strung that play towards the sideline. He might get a gain of one out to the 19-yard line. That's it. Either way, it's third and long. And yeah, not only a great job of closing in defensively on that far side in between the numbers and the far sideline, but also a good job of sealing the cutback lanes. Uh, Deontay Glover and Ty Hebron have done a good job creating and seeing those cutback lanes in that first half, but on that play there was none to be had and uh, just bottled up with a, a slight gain of just one. 
It will bring up a third down and nine. Ball at the 19-yard line. Wanting to throw the pass over the middle. Dorsey's wide open. Makes the catch at the 30. Gets through a tackle at the 32 and gets almost to the 40-yard line. Let's see where they're going to mark him. They'll put it on the 39. That game good for 20 and a Ram first down. And again, there's the zone defense for you. A good job by... Rodney Dorsey to break that zone and know where the gap in the zone is going to be. Found it perfectly. Didn't have anybody within about eight yards of him in either direction. 218 passing yards now, unofficially 17 of 25 for Tyson Bajant. The Rams convert on a third down, now five of nine on third down conversions. Out to their own 39 where it's first and 10 in the handoff. Going to the tailback, coming near side, that's Hebron. Turns the corner at the hash mark and fights to about the 44 for a pickup of five. You saw that out of the Rams in the first half, Matt. When they were successful offensively, it was the chunks of yardage they could get on first down to help set up manageable second and third downs. Second and five coming from the 44 in Ram territory. Shepard football right now holding on to a 14 to 10 lead. They led 14 to three at the intermission. Good job by Godwin Joe coming in to make that tackle. For Ohio Dominican. Bajan out of the gun. Three receivers very tight to the formation. It's a receiver screen, and the catch is made. And some blockers out in front for the receiver. That is Jordan Washington. He's listed as a freshman wideout out of Forestville High in Suitland, Maryland. Able to work that football over towards the sideline. He'll get to the midfield stripe, a pickup of six yards and another Ram first down. I've got 15 in the ballgame. Good to see another young receiver coming in like that for Shepard. Receiving core, missing a couple key members from last year, whether it's graduation or some transfers. A late in the, not even late in the offseason, early in this season, one of those big transfers. 4.42 on a running third quarter clock. There's that receiver screen far side. Devin Phelps immediately hit as he pulled that one in. Gets driven backwards and pretty quickly taken down. I believe that's Rich Jones, the sophomore defensive back with the stop after a gain of one. A good open field tackle. Devin Phelps has some shifty moves. Good job just breaking down by Jones and, and wrapping him up. And that was a ball that was thrown a little in front of where Devin Phelps probably wanted that to make some moves, be a little off balance catching that football and trying to work up field. You don't have to worry about those moves when you hit him just as he catches the football. That's textbook. Second down and nine from the 49 of ODU. Here comes the pressure, and Tyson Bajan will be sacked. It's a loss in the backfield as he gets taken down. Is that 99, Brian Adams? Is it a 99 or a 92? I think that's a nine. There is a 92 out there as well. That's Aaron Smoot Baker getting into the backfield. Either way, it's a loss. And that loss of two yards will go down as a sack. First time Bajans hit the deck so far yeah. today. First sack by the Ohio Dominican defense. Again, a team that was averaging three sacks a game last year, 35 a total on the season. So the fact that's just number one with 3.23 remaining in the third as this third quarter has flown by is really amazing for this offensive line. Devin Phelps, a good out pattern. That's going to be enough for a first down as he's inside the 40-yard line in Ohio Dominican territory, down to the 37-yard line before pushed out of bounds. First down, Shepard. It was a third down and 11, and the Rams are able to convert with the pass completion that goes down to the 37-yard line. That's the way you do it, 14 yards on the completion. Add that together with what Tyson Bajan has already done. He's up to 239 yards. I got 20 for 28 passing and 16 Ram first downs. Shepard taking their time, breaking that huddle down to seven seconds on the play clock. A wide out each way with a power pistol to the left. Snap is back and on the play action. Bajan throwing far side, a little comeback route, and it looked like some contact ahead of time, but they're letting them play. It's incomplete as Sterling Dudney was the intended receiver. I think that was good timing. The hand came around the front first and I think deflected the ball as the contact was being made. So I think that's a good no call by our back judges here. Yep, let them play. Yep. 
And, Matt, uh, talking about how quickly this game's going, I don't know. Uh, there's been some Mountain East games over the last couple of years <laughs> with two teams that really love passing the football. And it's 2.50 in the afternoon. It's been halftime for some Mountain East games in the past at 2.50 in the afternoon for a 12 o'clock kickoff. So this game really flying by at a pace that we don't usually see here in Shepherdstown. On second down and 10, handoff going to Ebron. He got a big opening at the line of scrimmage, quickly got into that linebacking <laughs> core, and eventually gets wrestled down by Dawson Dales, but not until he's inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain in a Ram first down. Establishing the run. Neither team has quit on the run yet. It's a tight ball game, so no reason to just go straight past. And Shepard has done an extremely good job today at just continuously mixing things up and uh, passing ball three or four times and mixing in the next to four out of five on the ground. I think that's why they've been so successful for the most part of moving the football today, but still a tight game. And if you're Shepard, you've got to punch it in here. Yeah, Ty Hyatt, the offensive coordinator, with a very good game plan. Just at the snap of the football, the penalty marker is down. Minus five as a Shepard player left a little early for the Rams. Just their second penalty now for 15 yards as they had a 10-yard defensive holding call back in that first half. That's something that so far has improved from last year as well. Yeah. I know early in the season... Uh, there was a big penalty issue, especially on the defensive side of the football. Uh, so that has cleaned up immensely. And, again, you get that when you get players that are another year older, another year more mature. And I think we're seeing that in that regard in this game so far. Eleventh play of this possession. Tyson Bajan shifting some players around. Down to eight seconds on the play clock. Two receivers here to this wide side left. Bajan dumping it off to Glover in the flat on that right side with a lineman out in front. He's to the sideline inside the 20 and gets spun down at about the 18-yard line. Jaden Davis, the junior defensive back with the stop. Joe Fisher, the right tackle, the redshirt freshman, 6'5", 285, leading the way up that far sideline. Good blocking upfield. That's a lot of fun right there as an offensive oh, lineman. Absolutely. Yeah, is, there's no better feeling as an offensive lineman knowing that you're going to come around a corner and you're not facing a 300-pound lineman. There's a 185-pound corner that you have to seal the edge on. Yeah, there, there is no better feeling than when you turn to see somebody of that stature as an offensive lineman waiting for you. Gain of 10 on that screen, and it's a second down and five, a wide receiver screen. Near side, Dorsey gets the block, stays in bounds, steps back to his right at the five, and goes into the end zone. It is a Shepard. University Ram touchdown. Great cutback at the last possible second. Uh, coming in was Jaden Davis uh, trying to push him out of the bat of three, and a great job by Dorsey to throw the brakes on going full speed, just showing the agility, and then cut back into the end zone. A great job. I think uh, when you look at Jaden Davis, he was trying to use the sideline as another defender and really just kind of force him out of the three, not expecting that cut back in, but a great job by Rodney Dorsey to find the end zone. A good move late. Shepard. Uh, an extra point away from making this an 11-point game once again. Hayden August to Scriven for the extra points. Snap placement hold and kick is up, and it is good. And we'll take a break with 50 seconds remaining in quarter number three. And Shepard now out in front of ODU 21-10. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. We'll give you the drive summary for the Rams after this ensuing kickoff. Hayden August Scriven kicking the ball well today. Approaches. 
gets it away. Nice deep end over end kick. The return man going to take it several yards deep, and he's going to bring it out. On the return is David Turner. Turner heading far side to the 15, a little wall to the 20. Out beyond the far side, 30 to the 40. It's the kicker who helps to slow him down, and then he gets a little help, but the stop is not made until that Ram 47-yard line, it looks like they'll spot it. Hayden August Scrivens not expecting to make too many tackles on a ball that is kicked halfway into the end zone with a return man facing backwards. Uh, not a play you see all that often at any level of football returning a, a kickoff that's that deep in the end zone and when you're trailing back to get that football but a great return a good hole right up that far hash mark again into Shepherd Ram territory and that is the return that Ohio Dominican needed as we're just 40 seconds away from this third quarter ending. Yeah roughly 55 yards on that return when you consider that he caught it a couple of yards deep. So they'll come to the football, Evan Ernst. We'll have three receivers here to his right. Boy, look at that line bunched in there as we have a whistle and a penalty, and someone moved earlier. That was a delay of game, I believe. Yep. It is a delay of game, minus five, and that will be just the fifth penalty for 35 yards now whistled against ODU. By the way, drive summary for Shepard. How about 12 plays, 82 yards, 6 minutes, 24 seconds, 18 yards on the touchdown pass going from Bajan to Dorsey. How about that? It was good. It was good. Football now back at about the 47-yard line in ODU territory. First down and 15, screen pass near side. Turner has it, blockers in front as Turner will get to the sideline and he'll be forced out of bounds at about, let's see, the 37. And that oh. should have. They're going to give him all the way down to about the 35. And that should have been an extra 15 on the end of that for a horse collar tackle. They changed the rules on that in college football. I think pretty much all levels of football from here on out. And I'll tell you about that rule change after this play. It's a play-action pass. Yeah, he's moving to his right. He's got a running lane. He's going to use it up to the 35-yard line inside the 30 and going to be pushed out right to that 30-yard line, maybe the 29. Getting he pushed out of bounds, stopping the clock at eight seconds. But that rule change, it used to be the hand had to go inside the back of the shoulder pads for it to be considered a horse collar. Now, from the nameplate up on the back of the jersey, if you pull from there, it is a horse collar. So I think maybe a rule that the officials are still getting used to that rule change is the clock now running again. I'm not sure, frankly, because he didn't bring him down. While he did stop or slow him down, it was not the tackle made by that nameplate. So... I have not seen an indication. Oh, the end of quarter number three. There we go. We did not uh, look up at the clock and realize that, uh, uh, well, this drive started with only 40 seconds left. They've run a couple of plays, and, well, that's enough to uh, do away with quarter number three. Don't go anywhere. 15 minutes left in this one. We head to quarter number four when we come back with Shepard leading 21-10. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Here we go to quarter number four. It's the Shepherd Rams out in front by a 21 to 10 score. Ohio Dominican with the football facing a second and four from the Ram 29. A little play action pass going to the tight end. To that far side staying inbounds is Blake Skaradovich. And Skaradovich down to the 21 yard line will have another ODU first down their ninth of the ball game. And it seemed like ODU just needed that the last drive to really get their offense clicking and moving consistently in the right direction. But it's going to be harder and harder for them to come back if there's these long drives continue and each team's only getting one or two a 
a quarter, and that's about what we had in that third quarter. I was going to say, not much time with the football. You better make hay while the sun shines, as they say. Ernst to throw, far side, back shoulder throw, catch is made. Could have potentially been an offensive pass interference call on Devonair Concliffe as it looked like he pushed Chris Jones aside and then made that catch. I'm only thinking that because his arms were completely extended and the defender kept going. The receiver <laughs> changed direction. And I don't know how that's not offensive pass interference. I mean, could it, if, it, if it wasn't, again, we're on the far side of the field from that. If that was just a great adjustment, then that's exactly what it was, a fantastic adjustment. But from our angle, definitely looked like a push-off. 15 yards on the pass completion. First down, go to go from the five. Ernst will have three receivers here along the near side. He'll take that snap, hand it off to Pitts. Pitts off the right side. Nobody's home, and he will walk into the end zone for the Panther touchdown. Middle was all clogged up, and Pitts did what he did a good bit last year. Again, Pitts, a guy that was number two behind Colson, that had three touchdowns last year, 5.4 a carry. That one just about five yards out, but did a good job as that middle was clogged up, bouncing it to the outside, avoiding one tackler and scampering into the end zone. And After a low-scoring first half, we've now seen both offenses come alive here in the third quarter now into the start of quarter number four. Well, here's the situation. ODU is going to go for two as they're hoping for an opportunity to get to within three points at 21 to 18. If they kick the extra point, uh, you're still far enough away. you got to get a yeah. touchdown anyway. The so extra this point is the doesn't right matter. Time. Yeah, the extra point does not matter at this point. You got to, if you go for two and you get it, you're only a field goal down. If you don't get it, you're going to need a touchdown. If you kick the field goal, or if you kick the extra point, you're going to need a touchdown. Well, they hold up play simply to, I guess, reset that play clock to 25 seconds, and now... Also readjusting where that football is more towards the near side hash yeah. mark rather than the center of the field. All right, I, That was more than it, than the, uh, the play clock. Empty backfield for Ernst, who takes that snap, looks over the middle, lets it go, incomplete, and then the receiver takes one well of a hit from, it looks like, Antonio Fox, the sophomore defensive back. Wow. That is exactly who it was, and that was a great play, and nothing illegal about that one. It was shoulder to chest. If you're watching it on TV, you're looking at that, maybe thinking, was that helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact? No. It was not. That was shoulder to chest, and still down on the field. Probably, it looks like David Turner. Yeah. And he is, I think, sucking wind right now. I don't think there's an injury there. I think he is just gasping for air. Turner, the intended target, being tended to after the incompletion on the two-point conversion and the Ram lead will hold it five. We're back in 60 with Shepard on top of Ohio Dominican 21-16. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Back again here at Rams Stadium. Training crew continuing to tend to David Turner, the wide receiver injured on the big hits on the two-point conversion in completion. Gives us a moment to remind you as he's to his feet and going to come to the near sideline. Today's game broadcast brought to you by Agerstown Ford, Panhandle Dumpsters, Marius Group, and Ameriprise Financial, Joe Ferretti Law Office, Green Tree Realty, Mike Folk for Governor, and special thanks to our title sponsor, Smallwood Small Insurance. Without them, we couldn't bring you Shepherd Ram football on TV 10, so thank you for your sponsorship. By the way, the drive summary, it's brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor. 
Find out more online at folk4wb.com, paid for by Mike Folk for Governor. Scoring drive for Ohio Dominican, five plays, 48 yards a minute, 41 seconds. It was a five-yard touchdown run for Frederick Pitts. Two-point conversion fails, 21-16. Shepard lambing with the ensuing kickoff. High deep end over end kick. Dorsey's going to take this one at the five-yard line along the near sideline. He'll get to the near side hash mark at the 18 where he's hit and brought down there. Sierra Hall coming in and making that play. Great job of closing down in the open field. 13-54 remaining in the ball game. Shepard with the five-point lead. Every possession so important right now. The Rams have put together some impressive drives. Matt, this is just their third offensive possession of this second half. They had a nine-play drive that resulted in a fumble in the end zone when it looked like they were going to punch one in and extend the lead. And then their last possession, 12 plays, 82 yards. They need another lengthy drive here. On first and 10, Bajan throws far side. Dorsey, wide receiver screen, tries to split through a couple of defenders and the block of Devin Phelps, and he'll go forward to the 21 for a gain of about three. Yeah, Goblin Joe tripping him up on the far side, just getting tangled up in the ankles. Good open field tackle, and Matt, a Division I football update with 7.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Mountaineers still getting shut out by Missouri, 38-0. to zero. Ouch. Yeah, not a good day for the... Uh, the Mountaineers and not sure it's going to be a great day to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. Oh, it's always a great day to be a Mountaineer. Just some of them hurt. <laughs> and this one will hurt. I would tell you about my Terp score, but that just may hurt you a little bit more. Hey, they're rolling. They're rolling over Syracuse right now at home. Second down and seven from the 21. Quick play action pass over the middle and the grab is made. That quick slant over the middle hauled in by Jordan Washington. <laughs> again, the freshman coming through. It's his second catch of this second half. And again, just a freshman. You love to see the youth out there. And not an overly big guy with stature, but seems to be pretty quick, especially with that first move. You've seen that as he's gotten more action here in the second half. And it gets off the ball very well, but it seems to be that first move that he's able to gain separation uh, from the defender. 13 yards on that pass completion, and now back to the ground game with Deontay Glover on first and 10 from the 34. Glover is going to pick up just about four yards out to the 38. There you go, another solid gain on first down to make things more manageable on second and third. This offense has played well today for the Rams. Defense has done its job as well. It's been a well-played game on both sides. Second down and six. Bajan taking the shotgun snap, looking far side. Quick out pattern. Grab is made, and the wide receiver quickly spun down. That's Greg Leonard, the senior wide out. He's had a solid game as well. Mark that one out to the 45-yard line. That gain is good for seven and a Ram first down. I've got 20 first downs on this game for the Shepard offense. They have been very good moving the chains and controlling the time of possession. On first down from their own 45, Bajant hands it off. Ball carrier this time looks to be Shaquan Dyson. So Dyson with the carry. Had a carry back in that first half. He moves back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more, second and ten. And Dyson got a good bit of carries. John Alderton, our producer, may remember the spring game. Now, Shaquan Dyson got quite a few carries, so it's somebody you can expect to see in the backfield is really the number three running back with Hebron along with Glover. Right now he's got two carries for minus three yards as he had a carry where he lost three back in that first half. Second down and 10. Again, it looks like Dyson back there. He'll take that handoff off the right side of the line. Boy, there's just no place to go. No place to go. Jalen Garner, defensive lineman, the one that really led that charge, and then he got a whole lot of help. Dawson Dale's in there. Alicio Amato, whose name we've called a lot, he's in there also. And Deontay Glover quickly sprinting back onto the field. Yeah. I think Coach McCook said, Dyson, we want to be able to use you, give our two workhorses a little bit of a break, but you got to move in the right direction because otherwise Shepard running the football has been very efficient in the second half. 
They are 6 of 10 on third down conversions, facing a key third and 10 here with 10.30 on a running fourth quarter clock, and Shepard in front, 21-16. Pistol formation as Bajan takes the snap, slings it to Glover in the flat on the left side, blockers out in front, he's to the midfield stripe, and then taken down at the 49-yard line. They might even mark him right on that midfield stripe, which would be a gain of five, but that's not enough for the first. And now you're going to call on your punter, Noah Pohl, to try to pin Ohio Dominican D. Or not. Uh, you can't go for it here, I can't imagine. Looks like uh, the wide receiver, Rodney Dorsey, a little slow in getting up. May have had his leg rolled up on as he was a blocker out there on that screen pass. You claim you can't, but... I mean, I guess you can. You can go for it on any part of the field if you want to. It's smarter in some places than others. With a five-point lead. I don't see Knowing Noah. Coach McCook, yeah. not going to happen. I don't see Noah Pohl anywhere, though. <laughs> I mean, he's somewhere on that sideline, but not out on the field like he's getting ready to come punt the football. With the injury timeout, we say thanks again to our telecast team, Eric Sterick and Jenny Kuhn, along with Andrew Ford running cameras, John Alderton, one of our on-site producers, along with director... Joseph Dagg, video producer Jason Kerr, Caleb Faleros, our engineer at the studio, along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. Matt, they're going for this here, buddy. It looks like they might be. Unless it's some sort of drop kick situation. It could be. We, we saw, saw that last year yep. with Tyson Bajan. Tyson Bajan has been known to get that pooch kick out of there. So let's wait and see whether that will be the case or not. Not very deep to be doing that, though. Lined up in the standard shotgun formation about a four yards back from the center. Dale's backing up again. Yeah, it's going to be one of those pooch kicks, it looks like. Yep, there it is. He gets set out of there, a spiraling kick that's going to land at the 10. Roll inside the 5, roll sideways and be downed at about the 3-yard line. Tyson Bajan with the big kick, and it looks to be Greg Leonard who got down there to touch the football dead at the 3. Best punt of the day by either team. Shepard starting quarterback. 47 yards down to the three-yard line, and it's a lot of field in front of this Panther offense as they take over with nine minutes and 50 seconds to play in the ball game. It'll be just the fourth offensive possession of this second half, and here's where you want that Ram defense to come up with something they haven't had yet today, a turnover. On a first down, looks like Pitts is out there at the tailback, or is that Colson? Can't quite tell. I think it's his Pitts. There will be the play-action pass, and the catch is made by the tight end, and quickly brought down is Blake Skaradovich. They're going to mark his progress, it looks like, at about the four-yard line, so a pickup of only one. Nice tackle out there by Kyle Smith, the Ram linebacker. Second down. Eight, almost nine yards to go for a first. Ernst still almost a yard deep in the end zone, awaiting that shotgun snap. He's got it. Hands it off. Ball carrier met in the hole. Will pick up a couple. Colson, the ball carrier, going to get out to about the seven. So give him three. And we'll call it third down and roughly six to go for a first. Looks like we may have another official's timeout, and we do as we have another Ram player that is down on the field and grabbing the back of his leg. It looks like might be grabbing his knee. I can't quite get the number from this angle. I think it's a angle. 45, so I believe it's Kyle Smith. And Could be wrong. I think there was a 4-5 on there, but again, that's may not be accurate. Yeah, the training crew tending to our injured player. As they tend to the injury, let's take a look at what is next for these two teams. We're on the road next week to follow the Shepherd Rams to Lake Erie, where they will play Mercyhurst. Haven't played the Lakers since 2010 when the Rams went up there and won the regional championship with a big win at Mercyhurst before going down to Delta State in Mississippi where they lost in that national semifinal. They still have LeBron or is that a different Lakers? Uh, different Lakers. Yeah, and for Ohio Dominican, another tough one, Valdosta State. 
next week on the road. That's 99, Michael Holtz, who is the injured Ram, who will leave the sidelines. Meanwhile, it's a game at Valdosta State for Ohio Dominican. They are only the preseason number one team. Third down and six from their own seven-yard line. Ernst wants to throw, looking, flush from the pocket, rolling near side, still looking, lost it down the field, a diving catch along the sideline. Did he make the grab or not? The officials are going to get together, and they're going to say it is a catch. David Turner, who went out injured after taking the big hit on the two-point conversion attempt, made the diving catch, but hold on, there is a penalty marker down in the backfield. It's going to negate a great catch. It looks like it's going to be in the area of a hold. Yes, it is holding on the Ohio Dominican offense. Oh, you wonder, there was an awful lot of time as the Rams then began to get pressure and force the quarterback out of the pocket. And there will be a hold that is going to move the football back to about the three-yard line. So we'll call it minus three on the hold. And for ODU... You're looking at now six penalties for approximately 40 yards. Now with the ball back at the three-yard line, it's basically a third down and ten. Back to throw the football, Ernst to looking near side. Quick out, catch made, and very quickly the receiver, Cedric Washington, wrestled out of bounds. Nice job along this near side. Jared Austin able to force him out and some help there from uh, the defender, Donnell Howard. But that uh, spot is going to be good enough for the first down. So they convert on the third and the football out to the 14-yard line on first down and 10. Handoff going to Colson. Coming near side. That's got to be a hold on the big tight end as he literally wrapped up Mike Blackman Herbert, the free safety, no flag down on the play as Colson turned the corner to the sideline, and he's out beyond the 30, mark him at the 32. And I disagree. I think that was a very good block up that near side by the tight end. I thought he got in the nameplate and was going straight back, didn't restrict the defender from going left or right. I think that's a good no call, Matt. Wide receiver screen, near side, catch made, and that is David Turner. Turner moving that football out to, it looks like the 36 for a pickup of four yards. Second down, roughly six to go for a first down. Nope, mark it out to the 37, so it was a gain of five, now a second down and five. The offensive pace picking up for ODU, seven minutes and counting in the ball game. On the read option, the give is to the tailback, and Colson immediately gets hit by Kyle Smith, who brings him down for a loss on the play. See where they'll spot it. Looks like the 35, so only a loss of two yards. Could have been worse. Third down and seven coming. A big third down. They converted on a third and ten earlier. In that first half, they were three of nine on third down conversions. In this second half, they have converted on one of two. The Rams show blitz. Here they come. Ernst to throw. Pressured. Now he won't get it away. Sacked on the play by Ricky Robinson. Big players come up, big situations, and the big moments happen for good teams when they should. And not a sack yet on the day for Shepard. And they picked a whale of a time to have their first on a big third down right there. Great job, Ricky Robinson, and great pressure by the entire front seven of Shepard on that play. Ricky Robinson just going to go down in the stack column for it. That is a loss of six yards. And Neidhart on to punt the football away. Had a big punt of 42 yards in the third quarter after punting four times for an average of 34 and a half yards in the first half. He gets it out of there. Spiraling kick, going to chase the return man back inside the 30, and he fumbles the football, trying to make an over-the-shoulder catch was Jordan Washington, and the loose ball gets picked up by ODU at the Ram 26-yard line. As a punt returner, if you do not think you have it cleanly, you got to let it go. That is a tough play to make on over-the-shoulder on a ball coming down that quickly, and it would have been a great catch to make absolutely it would have been 
good to see what he could have done with that. But as a punt returner, you're one of the few people that can let the ball go and just see what happens. If you do not think you have it 100% coming down at this point in the game, let it go. Sets Ohio Dominican up in perfect field position, really with perfect time to drain some time off the clock and punch it in late. From the Rams, mistake. From the Ram 26 on a first and 10, the read option and the pass to the tight end in the flat on the right side, and that's Skaradovich who will pick up a couple of yards. They'll mark it, it looks like, to about the 24, so two yards on the pass completion, a second down and eight coming. And this is third and fourth down territory with a five-point game right now. Although with five minutes left, depending on how much time is left, you may settle for three and then try to get it back. We'll wait and see. On second down and eight, here comes the blitz. Ernst to throw and incomplete. Tried to hit the slot receiver on a quick slant and off the hands of David Turner. Jared Austin almost able to come up with that one. Just out see. The way the ball was deflected, just wasn't able to adjust his line quick enough, but he was only about a yard from that one as it bounced off the receiver. Third down and eight from that Ram 24. I think if they get, if it's going to be a fourth and three or closer, I think you go for it. So interesting to see what happens here, because depending on the spot here after this play, uh, this could be two down territory. There is the snap back, and it's a quarterback draw, a straight run, and Ernst is able to slip a couple of tackles, and he will get taken down at the 21-yard line. He does pick up three, and it will make it a fourth down and five coming. Four of 12 on third down conversions right now in the ball game for Ohio Dominican. Four. 45 on a running clock as they get it going again and this could be your ball game and you saw Cedric Washington standing at the 20 yard line after that play was over signaling hey let's keep the offense out here the offense wants to go for it here again you're dealing with a backup kicker as well that could play a part of this they can burn it on a fourth down in their field goal drive at the end of the first half. Can they do it again on a fourth and five? The out pattern, the catch made, the diving grab. Did he get the first down? Let's wait and see. Looks Turner like it. made the catch between the 16 and 17 yard lines, and it's all going to depend on the spot of the football. Bring the chains out. Just got the signal from the far side. The chains are going to have to come all the way across the field. This is going to be close, inches one way or another. He did not get to the 16-yard line, so let's wait and see how it is going to go. They will bring the chains in all the way from the near sideline to the far sideline. Oh, this is going to be close. He's short. They stretch it out, and he did not get the first down. The Ram defense holds on that fourth down and five, and Shepard takes over offensively with 4.20 left in the game and a five-point lead, 21-16. Knowing where the sticks are, High Dominican running a route that was a bit shorter than they probably should have been. Your route on that play has got to be at least where the sticks are. There's no reason to run a route shorter than where that first down marker is going to be, and that is the epitome of a bend don't break defense right there yeah. bending just enough uh, no more than about six more inches to go or that would have been a first down a great stop by the shepherd ram defense that's the second time today we've seen the ram defense step up after a turnover great job saw it in the first half after the tyson Bajan interception just saw it after the muff punt right here power pistol to the right side Bajan with it there's the handoff it's glover with it bounces it off the left side up to the 30 20 yard line and that is where he will get stopped and Deontay Glover taking a pretty good hit there from Jaden Davis who came flying in so they scrimmaged the football initially from just about the 16 or we'll call it 17 yard line so that game going to be good for three it will bring up a second down about seven with that football at the 20. And the Rams will take all the time that they can before snapping the football. Play clock down to 12, down to 11. Play action pass. Bajan wants to throw. Here comes pressure. He steps up in the pocket. Slings the pass to the far side, and the catch is made by Deontay Glover. Spins away from a tackler and gets to the 30-yard line. Oh, what a play. And Tyson Bajan looking to the near sideline and 
flexing the biceps on that passing arm. Little razzle-dazzle there for Tyson. Thought for sure that was going to be a sack. And luckily, he wasn't necessarily able to spin out of the sack, but was able to spin his body or have his body spun in a way where he could get the football out before going down. Great play by the sophomore. First down and 10 after the 10-yard pass completion. I've got 21 first downs today for the Rams. Clock continues to wind as we near three minutes left. On first down, Bajan awaits that shotgun snap. Two receivers here to the wide side right. Play clock down to three, down to two. There is the handoff to Ante Glover. Met in the hole and stood up after a gain of just a yard. And you wonder at what point will Ohio Dominican and head coach Kelly Cunningham decide to use the timeouts, and there's one right there. Now let's go ahead and take a 30-second break, and then we will come back to Rams Stadium where we've got, it looks like, 2.52 to play in the contest and Shepard in front, 21-16. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. May have misspoke going into that break. It's Kelly Cummings as the head coach in his third year of leading the program. How about a 23-9 and record? He was the defensive coordinator before becoming the head coach when he joined the staff back in 2013. Right now, trying to see what he can do to preserve at least a little bit of time. As the Rams will line up on a second down and nine from the 31-yard line. And this time, it's Hebron on the carry over top of the left side of his line. He bursts across the 35 out to the 37. That'll be a six-yard gain. And it's a big third and three coming up. And again, ODU burns a timeout. All right, Matt, let's go with some hypotheticals here. <laughs> Shepard gains two here. Makes it... Third or fourth and a short one. You or punt the football. One. You punt the football yes, here? You have to. I, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm you just punt the football. Obviously, that course. thought is going through people's minds. We have to put that out there. That that would be an opportunity to quarterback sneak right up the middle and bam. The ball game's over. Don't get it yet. And you don't get it, and you give them a short field and a five point game. In this situation, you call on your punter and you say, Noah Pohl. Get that ball as far down that field as you can, and let's let the defense defend a lot of yards instead of half the field. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying there is more than one option coming up here. There is. Do you know what the best option is? Hunt the football. I'm not no, disagreeing. No, the best option is to get, to get first the first down, down here. Third. Yeah. Okay. Come on. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Come on. Power pistol to the left side with McCook as that blocking fullback. Looks like Hebron's in the backfield this time. And there is the handoff to Hebron. Oh, boy, he got met. And, oh, he fumbled the football. It's loose. And let's see who got it. Hebron trying to jump on the ball as it got knocked free from him. And I believe Hebron was the one to be able to get it. There are two players at the bottom of the pile. Hebron is one of them, and ODU is the other. And they say ODU gets the fumble. And that looks like 42. It is Dawson Dales who recovers the fumble. Well, uh, we didn't have that one in our scenario, uh -uh. did we? Nope, not one bit. I think it was that extra effort at the end by Ty Hebron. But he got stopped initially, then I think was trying to power forward. Uh, kept the feet running. You, you love the effort. But the more you stand up and the more there's a crowd in there and multiple guys trying to get in there and tackle you, it gives the opportunity for multiple people to also try to strip that football out. And now a short field, the 38-yard line where Ohio Dominican will start going into the end zone. 2.37 left, 21-16, Shepard ahead by five. Third turnover of the day for the Rams. A wide receiver screen in the flat to the right. It is caught by Cedric Washington, but not a lot of yardage there. As Washington gets quickly taken down after a gain of three. Second and seven coming from that Ram 35-yard line. 2-16 on a running fourth quarter clock. 21-16, a five-point Shepard advantage. Ernst out of the gun with a back to his left. Two receivers each way. 
Snap is back. He's got it. Here comes some pressure. Throwing deep along that far side and through the arms of the diving receiver as David Turner made the great effort to get to it but could not pull it in. Back defensively was the free safety, Mike Blackman Herbert. Good throw. Just went right through the hands of David Turner. Good adjustment as he was going uh, back out towards the far sideline. Would have been inside that five-yard line, but just couldn't watch it all the way through and right through his hands. Good defense to be tight uh, on the on Turner right there as well on that back side, making it harder to see when that football is coming in. Third down and seven. If they don't get it, it'll be fourth down and whatever's left. On third and long again with two receivers each way. The Rams do come on the blitz. Ernst has some time, now throws it out on that far side. Catch is made, and to the sideline, to the 10-yard line. Finally forced out of bounds there will be Cedric Washington, but a penalty marker is down in that defensive backfield. That could very well be offensive pass interference the way that flag came in. Maybe a shove. I can't, make, can't imagine that would be defense. I was looking back at that side of the field and didn't see anything. And it is going to be a hold on Shepard, actually. So they will decline and take the result of the play. And let's see where they're going to spot that football. Down at the 10-yard line after a 25-yard gain. Must have been a hold when he was making an out pattern. Because I look back and there was some, some shoving going on as the ball after the ball had been released. Thought they may have gone with offensive pass interference, but a hold as the, the route was being run. That's 15 first downs on the day for ODU on first and goal from the 10. Ernst to taking the shotgun snap. Looks far side, back shoulder throw, and knocked away at the last second. Oh, nice job by the Ram defender as it looks like Cortez Chase Irvin got the hand in there to knock that one away as they tried to get it to Devonair Concleaf. Incomplete, it'll bring up a second down, goal to go from the 10-yard line. This is where Concleaf was so dangerous last year and almost dangerous right there. Just could not haul that one in. Second and 10, a minute 47 running still clock here in the fourth quarter. Look for Concleaf again, their big target in the red zone. Nope, Ernst going to throw to Turner here on this near side. The wide receiver screen slips a couple of tackles, gets turned sideways and taken down at the three-yard line. A seven-yard gain, and the clock continues to wind. Third down, goal to go. Football inside of the three. Sixth play of the possession coming. They are four of 13 on third down conversions. Can the Rams make the stop? 119 and counting. 21 as 16. The Shepard lead. Up under center this time is Ernst. The wide receiver screen far side. They get it to the big guy. He gets hit. Falls forward and crosses the plane of the goal line for the touchdown. They did get it to Devonair Concleaf, the 6'2", 220-pounder. And he's in for the score from three yards out. We're going to have a taunting at the end of that one. Well, and that is not a smart penalty because if that goes on ODU... It is. It's going to go on Evan Erst. He was jawing after that play, and it looks like there's a conversation. Coach McCook's going to take it on the kickoff. Absolutely, because that's going to give you an opportunity to get better field position, hopefully a good return, and still have a chance. Now, right now, the Rams down by one, and you know that ODU is going to go for the two-point conversion. And they have to in a similar situation as earlier, a extra point. A field goal would put Shepard back ahead or win the game. If you kick the extra point, the two-point conversion, even if you miss, you're still going to have an extra point or a field goal that could win the game or at least put Shepard up in the game late. So, yeah, no-brainer here to go for two. But yeah, a big play at the end by still a young, young quarterback in Evan Ernst. you got to keep your mouth shut. Act like you've been there before. Game's not over yet. Two very good football teams still a minute and seven on this clock. Evan Ernst taking the shotgun snap. The wide receiver screen near side. Grab made, and he's into the end zone, and that is Frederick Pitts who pulls that one in and gets in for the two-point conversion. And that means the lead is at three points. Don't go anywhere. 107 left in this one. And when we come back, the Rams will get the kickoff. ODU now in front, 24-21.
My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Well, the kickoff will come from the 20-yard line after that 15-yard taunting penalty and Lamming with a nice kick all the way back inside the 10-yard line. Jones is going to have to play it on a bounce. He's inside the five, looking for some running room as he heads to the left, now spins, and down he goes at the 11-yard line. It so, couldn't have gone any worse. Yeah, and so much for enforcing that penalty on the kickoff. Ball caught at the five. Great kickoff, great kick to begin oh, absolutely. with. absolutely. Give Lamming all the credit. I just bobbled a little bit by Chris Jones on the bounce and had to reverse field before he even got going. And a tough job just got even tougher with a minute and one second left on the clock in this game. And Shepard has got at least, what do you think, at least the 30, I would think, to be in, in range for Hayden August Scrivens. Well, after the fumble, it took just six plays to cover 38 yards, a minute and 30 seconds. ODU with the three-yard touchdown pass. And that went from Evan Ernst to Devin Air Concleve. And that has ODU in front for the first time today. Pass in the flat on the left side intended for the tight end, DJ Cornish. Hit separated from the football. It's an incompletion. First time you've said DJ Cornish's name all game. I think that's the first target he's had as well. From their own 11, second down and 10 for the Rams. 58 seconds left in this one. Shepard, two timeouts remaining. So they're, even if they were to go three and out, or four and out quick here and punt the ball away, they don't have three timeouts to play with just two. So this is it, this drive is it. Well, there is a flag down, pass over the middle, caught by DJ Cornish, but now was it offside or was there some kind of movement? They let the play continue, so you wonder if it might have been offside, otherwise would they have blown it dead? No, it looks, I think it's gonna be a uh, formation infraction. It's going to be a legal formation by Shepard. So minus five on the penalty. Shepard has done well. Only penalized two times prior. Three penalties, 20 yards, but this one hurts. It's going to put the football all the way back down to the should be six yard line. And it will make it a second down and 15 in this ODU sideline. And they brought a decent little group of fans with them from Columbus. And with a penalty on the offense, the clock is running now. That was a completed pass. So 46 seconds then counting. Now is Bajan taking his time? He's got to hurry up here. The clock's running 42 seconds before the snap. He wants to throw along that far side, leaping into the air. Nice grab made by Devin Phelps along the sideline. Gets hit and taken down. It is a first down out to the 23-yard line. 17 yards on that pass completion. And you got to wonder if Tyson Beja had the idea the clock was running on that last play because he took about nine seconds before he snapped the football. On first down and 10, Bajan to throw, has time over the middle and throws a little too high as he tried to loft it over the linebackers and get it to Rodney Dorsey in a little soft spot in that defense. Pass is incomplete, stops that clock, 31 seconds left, second and 10 coming, the Rams at their own. 23. Had to loft that ball to get it over that first layer of linebackers playing back a zone defense. Again, that middle of the field has been open all day. Still two timeouts. Would not surprise me at all if they tried a couple of intermediate passes at Dorsey. He's been there all day, so look for him at about the 35 to 40 yard line here on the pass across the middle. Back to throw, Bajan lets it go near side. Grab is made and working his way towards the middle of the field and still on his feet. There goes Jordan Washington. Washington tripped up, goes down at the 49-yard line, still in Ram territory. And there was that right across the middle right there at the 40-yard line. That zone has been open all day. Keep going at it as we're going to have a spike here. Bajan spikes it at the 
the 49-yard line in Ohio Dominican territory, 21 seconds left, and that's a good job by Coach McCook not calling a timeout there. In college, again, the clock stops and while they move the chains, unlike the NFL, so you have time to get up to the football and spike it while only losing about a second after the ball is live again. So a great job by Coach McCook keeping those two timeouts. And again, you got to get to try to tie the football game. You got to think with Hayden August Scrivens, you got to get to about the 30 yard line. So you're looking at still 19 yards to go, two timeouts, 21 seconds left in this one. Second down and 10 from their own 47. Bajan has time, dumps it off, coming to the near side. Deontay Glover gets a nice block. Can he get out of bounds? He's still on his feet and does get out of bounds along the near sideline. Looks like he should be at about the 40 yard line. Are you at about two plays? over the middle here with 12 seconds left if they're quick slants or you have three if one can be quick out of bounds again still two timeouts you got to keep one in case it's a one across the middle and you can't stop the clock with a spike after a first down for that field goal attempt so you may i, I don't know if you try to you obviously try to get a little bit closer but i don't know if you waste one of these plays to get closer on a hail mary opportunity 14 yards on the pass completion. First and 10 from the 39 of ODU, 12 seconds left. Bajan taking that shotgun snap. Looking, looking, lets it go to that far side. Knocked away at the last second. That one hung in the air just long enough for Godwin Joe to get there and knock it down. Good job by Godwin Joe coming over, making that play. That's such a tough play going back across the field. You gotta have a really strong arm to make that play quickly. And Dyson Bajan with a strong arm, but not quite strong enough to get it there that quick especially against a good secondary and a good defense like Ohio Dominican. Again, some of the teams you played last year, you may be able to get away with that throw, but that's a dangerous throw at this point of the ball game. And about one play left, try to get into the field goal range. You're talking Hail Mary time, so look for another quick slant across the middle, try to get in that second layer of the zone defense behind the linebackers. Seven seconds left, second and ten from the 39. Snap is back. Bajan has it. Four, three, two, one. Bajan throwing deep towards the goal line, and it's tipped away and incomplete. No time left on the clock, ball game over, and ODU gets the win. Jordan Washington almost made the grab, but it got knocked away from him, incomplete. Time has run off the clock, and the Rams didn't get that second opportunity. They got to run only one play with seven seconds left, and the, I guess you would call it Hail Mary, so to speak, did not get answered, and ODU escapes with a 24-21 win. What a ball game. What a football game. Unfortunately, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. It's the point of sports. But wow. Oh, you, you can't say enough about either one of these teams. It was a tale of two halves. 21 to 7 is what Ohio Dominican outscored Shepard in the second half. And unfortunately, Bajan getting rushed and just couldn't find an intermediate pass, had to go with that Hail Mary. And it was a great attempt down the field by Jordan Washington uh, trying to adjust to it, but just couldn't come down with the football. But wow, this is anything what this season is going to be like. I'm looking forward to the 2019 football campaign for Shepard. Matt, at the same time, go back to last year and Shepard suffering that heartbreaking loss on the road at Notre Dame to open the season. They bounced back and played very well, but boy, this feels an awful lot like that. It does, but it doesn't at the same time, and I'll tell you why. Because that was a game where Shepard got down early and had to claw back yep. in and lost because they didn't have enough time to come back in the ball game. This is a case where they had the momentum. They had the 14-3 to lead and just couldn't hold on to it again, being outscored 21-7 to in the second half. So it's similar, but in a way it's completely different. It's a completely different feel to it. Too many mistakes, three turnovers, and two of those turnovers leading directly to points on those ensuing drives. We'll tell you how it played out as we get into the postgame show after this timeout. The post game brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg, phone 304 263 3361. The final today from Rams Stadium, Ohio Dominican tops our Shepherd Rams 24 21. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, 
return it, no questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and bulk pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. You've been watching play-by-play coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's telecast has been brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Fordofhagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. Panhandledumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis broker greentreerealty.com mike folk for governor accountable ethical responsible folk for wv.com and by smallwood and small an eerie affiliate total insurance solutions football game when shepherd took the seven to nothing lead with 10 16 to play in the opening quarter a 40 yard touchdown pass working from tyson bajant going to devin phelps the rams with that seven to nothing lead going into quarter number two they would make it a 14 to nothing lead capping a very impressive 15 play 85 yard seven minute 19 second drive with a one yard touchdown run for deontay glover the rams out in front 14 to nothing until the final seconds in fact 12 seconds in that first half when a 28 yard field goal was up and through for kyle lamming that got odu on the board that capped an 18 play 75 yard almost eight minutes minute drive for them and we went into the locker room at the half with Shepard in front by that 14 to 3 score. Matt it looked like the Rams were ready to add to the lead with their opening possession of the second half after the defense forced a three and out a nice 42 yard punt pushed the Rams back to their own 36 and they marched down the field and on the ninth play of the drive first and goal from the two it looked like they were going to get in and the uh, Ram running back Ty Hebron got hit from our angle you couldn't tell where he was as he was trying to fight to that goal line lost the football it was recovered in the end zone and I guess that's where Ohio Dominican grabbed the momentum in this game and unfortunately it's going to be a game for Ty Hebron that he's going to want to forget one of two fumbles and not just two fumbles but two fumbles in situations where you got to hold on to the football that was the first one fumbling into the end zone then on a third down where Shepard even if they don't make it if he goes down it's fourth and three they punt it away and give Ohio Dominican a long field with no timeouts because at that point they would have to call their last timeout or uh, ran the clock down more and you're looking at uh, probably 80 yards uh, for them to go and get the winning touchdown or the go-ahead touchdown at that point so unfortunately uh, for Ty Hebron who had a really good game otherwise uh, just it couldn't hold on to the football in key situations. Hello, Ohio Dominican taking that first fumble from the end zone and putting together a very quick two-play, 80-yard drive in 43 seconds. 77 yards was that scoring strike as it went from Evan Ernst to Devonair Concliffe. That cut it to 14-10, to 10, but Shepard would answer. The Rams with a lengthy 12-play, 82-yard drive, an 18-yard touchdown pass. That one going from Tyson Bajan to Rodney Dorsey, and the Rams were back in front 21-10. You felt pretty comfortable, but Ohio Dominican was not going to go away as they would get a touchdown on their next possession, a five-play 48-yard drive and a five-yard touchdown run for the uh, backup tailback Frederick Pitts, and that cut it to 21-16. And that was in part to a great kickoff return 
That was the 55-yard kickoff yes. return starting about six yards deep in the end zone and returning it into Shepherd Ram territory. So that set up and allowed that drive to be much quicker than it probably would have been otherwise, if at all. Yep, David Turner with that big return leading to the pitch uh, touchdown to cap that drive. Two-point conversion failed. The Rams held that lead at five until a minute and seven left. And after a fumble recovery, Ohio Dominican, six plays, 38 yards, a minute and 30 seconds, capped by the three-yard touchdown on the screen pass from Ernst to Devonair Concleef as he goes in from three yards out. Shepard with a Hail Mary attempt, a deep pass, if you will, to the goal line on the final play of the game, batted away incomplete, and your final score, 24-21. ODU. Matt, a quick look at some of the numbers. Uh, starting with Ohio Dominican, uh, Ernst, the quarterback, a great day for him, 31 for 39. That's 80% on the completion percentage, 75% as a season last year. That was amongst the tops in the nation, so he looks like he's uh, going to start just as well as he finished last year. Uh, 335 yards through the air, two touchdowns. His favorite target, yardage-wise, uh, was... Uh, Devin Air Concleef, he finished with 158 yards on the day on just three receptions, uh, two touchdowns, a 77-yard long. That was averaging about 52.7 a catch. Uh, favorite target reception-wise was David Turner. He finished with 61 yards on 10 receptions. Uh, rushing the football, uh, not a good day rushing the football. As you look at E.J. Colson, he only had uh, 25 yards on the ground on 10 carries. And uh, Fred Pitts, uh, just five carries for 22 yards. Ernst added 26 yards on six carries. So Shepard doing a really good job in that front seven. Let's go to that Shepard University Ram football team. Tyson Bajan, 30 for 43. Hard to believe he dropped back to pass 43 times. Uh, that number's got to come down a little bit. you got to get more involved with the run, or at least run a little bit more often with a younger quarterback. Although he threw, what, about 50? times in the opener last year, maybe even been upwards of 55, a 69.8, so 70% completion percentage, not bad for throwing the ball 43 times. He had two touchdowns, one interception, threw for 358 yards. Devin Phelps finished the game with six receptions, 89 yards. Rodney Dorsey finished the ball game with seven receptions, 89 yards. Deontay Glover out of the backfield, five receptions for 46 yards. Rushing, Ty Hebron led the game in rushing yards, 62 yards on 10, on 10 carries. That's a great average. You can bust out 6.2 yards a carry. That is not bad at all. You've got to be able to hold on to the football, especially in key situations. Deontay Glover finished the game with 12 carries and 40 yards gained. He also added the touchdown in that first half. That's your look at the stats from this one. All right, one final timeout that we need to take. We'll go ahead and make this a full two-minute timeout. That's uh, just some word for Caleb Falero back at the studio, a two-minute timeout. We'll come back and take a look at some scores from around the conferences representing these two teams and as well as uh, Division One. and then we will wrap up our post-game show and our TV10 coverage of Shepard Rams football. Final from Rams Stadium in the opener. It is Ohio Dominican 24, Shepard 21. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? The Maytag extra power button. More muscle to tackle the tough job. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial.
Back one final time on this Saturday afternoon at Rams Stadium, wrapping up our post-game show brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance, your total insurance solution. They're at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. Give them a call at 304-263-3361. Before we jump into some scores from elsewhere around Division Two and Division One, we need to name our electrifying play of the game. And I think there are several candidates. Obviously, the 77-yard touchdown pass for Ohio Dominican that got them to within 14 to 10 is a big one, but uh, that 55-yard kick return that you mentioned was very huge in setting them up, and obviously, I think you got to look at the uh, the game-winning touchdown with a minute and seven seconds left. Uh, unfortunately, as you look back for Shepard, I don't know that you, you end up with that electrifying play just the way this uh, game turned out. I think it was one. It was that first touchdown to Devin Phelps. I think that's really their only candidate, because yep. you thought that was kind of setting the tone. It was a long play uh, to get in the end zone, but yeah, I think it's got to go. I think my my vote has got to be the 77-yard run for Concleve off the sideline where he adjusts on the football on a ball that would have been a touchdown, I think, either way, uh, depending on how it was thrown. Uh, but adjusts on it, has great blockers in front of him and goes 77 yards. So I think that is our, uh, that's, that's going to be our electrifying play of the game today. And that's brought to you by Orsini Supply and Sin Martinsburg, offering top names in kitchen and laundry appliances like Amana, Maytag, Gen Air, KitchenAid, and Whirlpool. And for you grill masters, Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Find out more online at Orsini's.com. Before we look ahead to our next broadcast, let's look to some other scores today. Just going to give you some finals from the PSAC. Tune in to Miller Time on Monday as we'll kind of recap all of the scores from D2, D1, and the NFL on our Miller Time program, 5 to 6.30 on Monday. Again, we'll be out at the final score on 1517 Winchester Avenue from 5 to 6.30. And then Matt and I will be there hanging out with people until about halftime of the first game of Monday Night Football. If anybody's interested, come on, hang out with us. Good deals, good food, good people, and we're talking football, all show. What can possibly beat that? Some finals from the PSAC today. Assumption was taking on Kutztown. It was all Kutztown, a regional a battle that tells you a little bit of something of how good Kutztown's going to be this year. Kutztown wins 54-216. Westchester barely able to beat Bentley. Don't know a whole lot about Bentley, but Westchester, who uh, was the preseason number one pick on the Rams side, the east of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. And number Conference. 22 in the and coaches' poll. I think that number 19 in the D2 uh, football poll. Uh, they get the win over Bentley 14-7. to IUP uh, beats New Haven 24-13. Uh, Shippensburg. Uh, comes back a little bit, but Clarence still whoops up on him, 48-28 to in the third quarter. Stonehill beating Bloomsburg, 27-7. to East Stroudsburg and Wagner kicking off at 6, and Edinburgh taking on Grand Valley tonight at 7. They expect Grand Valley to probably have their way in that game. All right, and Division One, just a couple of scores to pass your way. A couple of scores for you. WVU falls to 1-1. One one. Missouri had their way, 38-7. to is the final score on that one. The Mountaineers getting a touchdown late, but not really a whole lot. The Mountaineers did well in that football game. Army almost beats Michigan. Took overtime for the Wolverines to get the win 24 to 21. Last night. Again, the final from Boise State and Marshall. It was Marshall falling 14-7. to And regionally and personally, my Maryland Terps improved to 2-0, getting the 63-20 to win against number 21 Syracuse. So the last two weeks, the Terps scored 79 and 63. So not getting too excited yet, but I think that uh, trends in the right direction as opposed to that Howard win. It's a good start to the season. Well, it was a good game here, but uh, Shepard falls short. ODU gets the victory 24-21, and now Ohio Dominican with a little bit of momentum, if you will, as they have a very tough game coming up. They're at Valdosta State next to Saturday with a kickoff at 6 p.m., and we'll be following our Shepard University Rams up to Lake Erie. They will play at Mercyhurst, and next Saturday's kickoff is at 3, our scheduled pregame at 2.30. Mercyhurst, a hard-fought close win over Lake Erie, also out of the G-Max, so let's see how that one plays out next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Not looking forward to the drive necessarily, but should be fun, should be a entertaining football game. Looking forward to see what the Shepherd Ram team does to bounce back from this tough loss here today. That will wrap up the post-game show brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg. 
Well, a special thanks goes out to each of our sponsors supporting our coverage of Shepherd Ram football on TV10. We thank you for joining us for the broadcast. Thanks goes out to uh, Melanie Ford, to Chauncey Winbush, to Chip Ransom, to so many others here at Rams Stadium and at Shepherd University for all of their help and support with today's broadcast coverage. And thanks goes out to each member of our broadcast crew, Eric Sterick, Jenny Kuhn, Andrew Ford running cameras, John Alderton running our Sling Studio, our director, Joseph Dagg, our video producer is Jason Kerr. Caleb Valero is our studio engineer for Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller wrapping up today's broadcast with a reminder. Our final, it is ODU 24 and Shepard 21. Until next Saturday, so long, everyone. You've been watching play-by-play -play coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's telecast has been brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Ford of Hagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. PanhandleDumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis broker greentreerealty.com mike folk for governor accountable ethical responsible folk for wv.com and by smallwood and small an eerie affiliate total insurance solutions tv 10 sports thanks you for watching today's presentation of shepherd university rams football all rights reserved